Hey everybody, what's going on? Welcome to another episode of Heavy Metallurgy's Album Club. I'm one of your hosts, Marty, and of course, joined as always by the amazing Professor Steele. Alan, how you doing? I'm doing all right. Uh, it's getting a little hot down here, not only because it's the south and it's spring, but uh, having a few air conditioner problems. So uh, yeah, it's a little toasty. If it looks a little dark in here, I'm kind of keeping the lights down because uh, <laughs> the temperature be rising. <laughs> I thought you were going for a romantic vibe. I kind of liked it a little bit. You know, I'm not going to lie. <laughs> yeah, 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 give, <laughs> give it another hour or two. And it's, it is going to be getting kind of sweaty in here. And have that kind of, you know, uh, <clears throat> oil of oil kind of uh, sheen going to the lens. <laughs> as very I nice. Very over nice. The computer. But uh, we'll get through it. Hello to everybody in the chat. Uh, good to see a lot of the regulars are coming in. Ian, Wade, Simon, Overkill, Aaron, Tim, Frosty, James. Good evening. Hope everyone's having a good week and ready to hang out, have some fun. We've got a great guest making his long-awaited return. But before we bring him out, Marty, do you have any announcements you need to make? Uh, Glorious Dead's playing in Marquette, Michigan tomorrow at Cognition Brewery in Marquette. If I didn't say Marquette, I'll say it again, Marquette, Michigan. I think the door's open at six. If you're up that way, stop by. I guess it's a tiny place. So think skinny when you're in there. Um, <laughs> other than that, been a busy, busy week. I still have about a hundred pre-orders to go out that involve a t-shirt. So if you pre-ordered a t-shirt along with some other stuff, yeah, that's the hold up. That's why you don't have your stuff yet. So next week, I'll be caught up next week. So hang in there. And also we have t-shirts here too through Heavy Metallurgy. You've seen them. You got the Collector Scum, the Napalm Death Parody. You got the Sex Condor shirts and of course the um, the Riddick design as well. Plus some other stuff. Link in the description. Go check it out. But without further ado, do you have anything you want to add before we bring Bill out? Uh, sure, yes, actually I do. I want to say a uh, quick thank you to Celtic Frosty, who sent a VCLT box Ooh. my way uh, earlier this week. Uh, I'm sporting a nifty new oh. shirt, thanks to Frosty. It fits good and looks good. Uh, he also included some cool patches, which I've got a plan for, so uh, stay tuned for that. A battle and, scarf? Uh, yeah. <laughs> huh? A battle scarf? <laughs> oh, no, 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 no. Oh. Better. Ah, trust me. Uh, but also a uh, cool stack of CDs, not a single one of which I've ever heard of any of these bands. So I haven't had a chance to really give them much attention yet. So they will not be featured in tonight's video. But yeah, a big thank you to Frosty for the cool VCLT box. Much appreciated. Stuff you haven't heard of. Wow. How did he manage that? That's amazing. There, I think there's seven CDs and every single one is just like, never heard of them. Never heard of them. Never heard of them. Wow. So, yeah, a, a perfect seven for seven in terms of bands that are completely new to me, which is, yeah, exactly why VCLT stuff is really fun. Absolutely. Yep. All right. Well, let's get Bill out here from the Ninth Circle. Welcome hey. back, Bill. It's been October since you've been hey, around. Bill. It's good it's to see you. Yeah, good to see you guys. I was trying to get a hairless cat in a cardigan for tonight, but I couldn't <laughs> I couldn't get a hairless cat in time. <laughs> Sorry. Sorry to disappoint. We needed it, you know? Yeah. They hit hmm. the market very infrequently, so you have to kind of keep an eye an eye to the ground there to try to find the right one. Yeah, it's they one do. of them purebred things. They're expensive when you do too, so they are. Thousand. Uh, if I mean, you have a cat, just shave one. I mean, that's fine. It'll grow back. That'll go well. Like, yeah. <laughs> Stroke his bald skin and drink some red wine. <laughs> just shave the half that's in front of the camera. The other half you can leave on. Yeah, exactly. Just like the head, you know, the torso. We're good. Back half can stay. stay uh, then act all surprised when someone's knocking at your door from the SPCA. <laughs> yeah. yeah. <laughs> no, I swear he likes the li he likes it this way. It <laughs> it's all the fashion in uh, Milan. Yeah, like. The Europeans love their half-shaved cats. So. <laughs> That's absolutely right. This is how the cats in Bergen like it, maybe. <laughs> the Bergen cats. The Bergen <laughs> cats. The Oslo cats, they know like this look. They don't like it. <laughs> Not one bit. <laughs> Not one bit. <laughs> well, it's good to see you. What has been going on over at the Ninth Circle? You know, there's a little quiet spell. Life yeah, gets in the way. Three, three months of being a, a worthless sack of shit. No, <laughs> no more like... <laughs> just work getting in the way and throwing me off. So, you know, in the past few weeks, I've come back and done a few, just a few contest entries for, you know, all the awesome people in the VC here. One for metal miners for Anthony. Yep. One for uh, Trevor at fumes of hatred there too. Yep. So, 
But, uh, you know, it's good to be back. I did not intend to be gone for three months. Um, so, yeah, there's going to be more more stuff coming, more videos coming. Um, probably have another one. I've kind of had a series of my Attack of the Clones where I talk about, you know, clone bands. I've done one for Celtic Frost. Or, no, sorry, not Celtic Frost. Hellhammer. And then one for Motorhead. You know, so I'll have another one of those. Probably the next thing I do. Yeah, those are always really fun. You'd pick really good ones to include on those lists for sure. Yeah bands that have a lot of of copycats you know so and then uh my band on cross we played our first show back in february so after existing for i mean the band existing for five years several years before me and then now two and a half years with me we finally played our first show which was awesome so yeah so there's been other stuff going on but i'm glad to be back making videos and hanging out and chatting with everybody hey our condolences to steve sorry you're so your dad passed. That's, that's yeah. All right. Oh, yeah. Hang that's, in there, man. Is, hope that you're doing terrible. okay. I mean, as good as you can. Yeah. Thanks, Lando. I appreciate it. But um, yeah. Well, it's been we've been meaning to get Bill back. Um, he's had to work some Friday nights here, but we finally wrangled him in, and um, we're gonna be doing just an easy, fun. What's spinning? I know everybody kind of likes those things, and um, I have some things to do after this is all over before my six hour drive tomorrow so <laughs> perfect this is absolutely perfect so bill let's get this started with you unless there's anything else you want to pimp go for nope. it no nope. no okay. that's good i'm ready all right so i'll go i'm gonna i'm gonna piggyback somewhat off of i watched the uh the album club that you guys did this this week and a couple couple responses to that first thing i was gonna like uh Jim was talking about, oh, is there any 2024 death metal that isn't on 20 bucks spin that's worth <laughs> checking out? And I ju just got this, and I've been listening to this and enjoying it quite a bit. Uh, the new Cardiac Arrest here that just came out mm. on Hell's Headbangers. The, what is it called? Because I can't read it. The Stench of Eternity. These these guys from Chicago, they've been around since 97. I don't know, this is probably like their sixth or seventh record. Just really good, mm. kind of like very late 80s early 90s sounding death metal it still has that thrashy vibe where you can tell that you know it's heavily influenced by you know um hella weight slayer and you know possessed and that kind of stuff but it has the more modern production and, and autopsy and all that stuff you know these guys are great you know so i've been really enjoying it so far there's a little whoop inside there but that would be my recommendation for him check out the new cardiac arrest right on eternity he's right though 20 bucks spin they got a good ear to the ground for sure but you know there's a lot coming out on the 20 there's a 20 bucks spin sound for sure and if you're not there really is. in the mood for that it's nice to get a little bit of recommendations from outside of that sphere for sure yes okay good start Ian. thank you so much oh thank you Ian. appreciate it Good to have you in the chat, as always. <laughs> Me and Alan are battling over the, the show and unshow uh, button here. Sorry. <laughs> You're good. But no, it's, thank you so much. Appreciate you. I sent out your hoodie this past week, too. Or was it last week? I don't remember. Should be coming. I wanted to add other hoodie. stuff to it, but I didn't know what to put in it. So next time. Next time. All right, Alan. What's going right. on? What you got? Oh, uh, let's see. I've been listening to just all kinds of random stuff lately we've been doing some you know discography deep dives lately so a lot of it's been tied to that which no need to talk about that we've covered those on other streams but yeah some of the other things that have kind of snuck in here and there um <clears throat> been playing this one a little bit revisiting it it's accepts uh blood of nations uh this is their 2010 album and the first one with uh mike tornillo on vocals so this was kind of their comeback album after you know uh, things fell apart in the mid 90s they were going for like 14 years i think um but yeah then they got mike to take over the vocal duties which of course was a you know kind of tall order to fill but he does it really really well you know he's if folks aren't familiar with him he's been in uh, tt quick and he's got a good voice it's you know in the udo vein you're not going to mistake him for udo at all but He's got, you know, kind of a very similar, kind of you know, gruff, bit gravelly voice, but, uh, you know, very charismatic. So he he fits in uh, without it sounding like somebody completely different in the band. And with also sounding like, you know, just a 
per someone trying to perfectly clone Udo at the same time. And so, yeah, this one is pretty good. It showed up used. I had never heard any of uh, the Tornillo era stuff from Accept, so it was a good chance to kind of check it out. And yeah, it's what you'd expect from Accept. You know, very tough, straightforward, no frills kind of heavy metal. Uh, the title track is really good, very, very catchy on it. Uh, if I've got a complaint, you know, the album is 13 songs long. It's like, you, you just don't need that many songs on here. Uh, it, it runs for a long, long time. One of them, I think, is technically a bonus track, but why? <laughs> that's just uh, that, that's a big chunk of music. But, you know, uh, they, they needed to, of course, you know, prove the concept was going to work, that they could put out, you know, a really good, badass sounding album without Udo in the band. And yeah, mission accomplished. Uh, the, the album stands on its own two feet just fine. And it shows the band, you know, had a path forward that uh, it didn't have to be a one and done. Uh, they proved they could exist without Udo behind the microphone. So yeah, uh, good listen. Glad I got a chance to finally check out that. I've heard a couple of others from his era since then. And you know, they're also pretty good. I'm wondering, though, if they kind of just found a lane and have stayed in it because there doesn't seem to be too much variation. But uh, I'll have to dig into those others. It is some more to find out for sure. Well, when Except yeah. messes around, I mean, they're kind of lambasted that. Was it the Beat the Heat album? It's kind of glammy. I mean, Eat the Heat, yeah. Eat the well, Heat. That, that's, that was it's also okay. The... It's an okay record, but it's... Mm. You know, it's tough. Yeah. I mean, they kind of changed directions there. I mean, it also, that one didn't have Udo on it. That was where yep. he had left the band before coming back. So that album already was going to be an uphill, you know, slog to try to get it to go over with people in the first place. But um, yeah, I mean, they, they know what works for them. And if they stick to it, it's hard to blame them. It just, you know, sometimes you might, I have a feeling maybe there's a point where it's like, do I need another Mike Tornillo era except album? Eh, after three or four, there might be enough. We'll just, but uh, we'll find out as I slowly work through that part of the catalog. Right and, on. Uh, oh, and uh, I put it up on the screen a minute ago, but to announce in case folks did not see it uh, over at Rick's channel, the oh. Dreadful Minutes tomorrow night, he has his annual 420 stream going on. So. Yeah, if you're online tomorrow night looking for some fun, make sure you stop in over there and say hello to Rick and his guests. The background may look like this here, what we got going on now. <laughs> <laughs> Except it won't be a background. <laughs> It'll be the background. Yep, absolutely. It'll just be Cypress Hill playing for eight hours. <laughs> Nothing but. Yep. Rick trying to like, you know, get the Cheeto crumbs out from, you know, those you know, like thin CD case uh, <laughs> sleeves yeah. that he's been using lately. Snort, snorting it out with a straw. <laughs> Spill my yeah, like a little cocktail straw. It's like that damn Dorito crumbs got in there with my Satyricon yeah. CDs. Yeah. I, gotta I spilled get the allowed. bong water in my sleeves, man. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> They're ruined. <laughs> yep. If um, only I use the real cases. The cannabis core CDs you? would just be kind of floating there in the little styrofoam <laughs> pocket looking thing. <laughs> yeah. Oh, Rick, Rick, Rick. Mm, we you love and you, your Rick. you and your innovations. We love you. <laughs> indeed, indeed. So yes, definitely go check that out tomorrow, folks. Absolutely. All, All right. right. Well, your turn, Marty. I'm still a little bit uh, catching up with the Borknagar stream we did um, last week with Melanie and. Uh, Jimmy from Future Ruins. This new Borknagar record, Fall. Uh, come on now. That's not going to. Well, the new Borknagar record is called Fall. And um, I am quite smitten with the uh, the first song on this album called Summits. Oh, it's I put it on. The whole album is really, really good. Mm -hmm. The The first song, though, I it's one of those deals. It's kind of like um, I just can't. I keep going back and listening to it over and over and over again. It's um, vo ICS Vortex on vocals is split up between the two vocalists and his clean triumphant vocals at the end of the song are just, wow, so good. He is just top of his game. I've always loved his voice and I love the way he phrases. I love the way he is a very playful singer and um, fills, fills in the gaps with the atypical and just seemingly the perfect melody lines it's just so he's so good and yeah. i'm really really surprised at how good this record is i mean i shouldn't be surprised i mean the talent is 
unmatched in this band but um yeah. So, solo albums though can get weird as sometimes they want to experiment and do the other goofy stuff that they can't do in the band so yeah. no I, I get what you're saying that yeah solo albums will sometimes be surprising how tight they are yeah but the um Borknagar fall it's great i really really love it um definitely check it out and if you haven't watched the Borknagar stream it's archived for your convenience of course so <laughs> that, that's the only non-physical thing i have for tonight so bill you're back all right i've got my one non-physical thing too so great segue and this also ties into the what your next uh album club is going to be sacrilege beyond the realms of madness but this is a local band from salt lake and this is one of the bands we played with that harkens back a lot actually to sacrilege so this band uh ribbons here as you see furby furby with a knife there so <laughs> which i love I love so uh erica the vocalist for this band sounds a lot like tam and mm. she's heavily influenced they're heavily influenced by sacrilege i mean they don't sound exactly like them at all but they're definitely cut from that cloth of kind of that that raw kind of sloppy crusty 80s thrashy hardcore metal you know like metallic hardcore type stuff really good short songs you know usually under two minutes so and just great live there's a video uh, if you go on youtube you can see ribbons at harsh fest 2023 you should watch it it's their sets are you know 17 minutes long so <laughs> it really takes longer to set up the drums and haul that crap around than it does exactly. to play <laughs> exactly yeah. exactly so but it's awesome and i love them they're great people they're all they're all young i mean they're like we the show we played it was their drummer's 21st birthday <laughs> So they were like, oh, we can finally play this bar because he's 21 years old now. <laughs> and I'm just like, oh my God. I'm just think I'm like thinking back. I'm like, yeah, I would that was like 30 years ago for me. Like I'm, you know, but they're great. I would highly recommend anybody if you like you like sacrilege, you like old 80s hardcore, you know, stuff, you like stuff like TV and instinct or social unrest, check out ribbons. All right. Alan. All right. Um, this one arrived recently. I've only given it a couple of spins. It is the uh, Left Cross album, Upon Desecrated Altars, a uh, band from Richmond, Virginia. Um, first impression is it's operating very much in that kind of you know, bolt thrower ish uh, worship style of death metal, you know, which I tend to like. Uh, if you're going to copy someone, might as well copy one of the greats and uh you know that's kind of what they're doing here it, but it has a little more of its own personality uh it's you know from when i think you know bolt thrower clones you think of something like you know frozen soul sounds you know very kind of spot on this one definitely makes me think of bolt thrower but it doesn't make me think that they're trying to do nothing but emulate bolt thrower which is a good thing you know that said i was maybe ex uh, i feel like i was expecting it to be maybe a little more varied um so i'm kind of on the fence on this one the first impression is like yeah okay i see what they're trying to do haven't convinced myself that they've done it just yet i have to go back and then spin it a few more times but uh, it's kind of a cool release uh, several folks you know spoke positively of it when it came out um and so it kind of been in the back of my brain to pick it up when i got a chance Found it on sale recently, and so I was like, okay, yep, we'll give that one a chance. And, uh, yeah, we'll say the jury's still out. I think it's going to be one of those releases that's good. I'm just not sure yet if it's got enough of its own personality that it's going to stay in rotation or come back in rotation. Or if it's going to be one of those albums at the end of the day, I feel like, eh, you know, it's fine. And then it kind of gets shelved, and then it kind of gets forgot. Oh, we'll have to see with a little more feedback. Um have either of y'all checked this one out? Yeah, yeah, I've got what it. I bought it. On, yeah, I bought it on vinyl, and I, I like, I like it. It definitely, I can hear that bolt thrower. I hear a little bit of you know early and tuned in there as well. Mm. And, you know, and again, a little bit. I think Eric was saying, yeah, maybe a little bit of like conqueror, a little bit, just a hint of like almost war metal, just a, just a sprinkle, just a little little flavor. Mm -hmm. But I, yep. I enjoy it. It's yep. a grower, I think that's the sense i'm getting and like yeah logan just said like it's kind of like a solid seven if i had to pass judgment on it right now that's kind of what i'd say too it's like that's a good solid b of an album <laughs> uh, yeah but yeah it's um yeah it's pretty good 
um, before passing it to Marty, just to mention too, a lot of folks are mentioning several albums that have come out lately in case people are behind on their new releases. There's a lot of relatively big name stuff that's dropping in April and into early May. So yeah. check your release calendars and hold on tightly to your wallets. Cause there, there are a lot of uh, cool things being released that a lot of folks will probably want to check out. So too, too many to reel off, but other channels and stuff are doing the, you know, what's coming out in April kind of thing. And April 19th today was one of those days where things were stacked pretty deep. So just public service announcement. Lots of good new metal titles out there if you're looking to spend some money this weekend. Yep, never ends. And it's always, there's something good every week. Maybe we should start off every uh, episode with a list of a handful of releases that came out that week. We could. Yeah. We could. But, uh, that could be a thing. We will keep that. I mean, make a note about that. That's actually, good. I like that idea, Marty. Not to, we don't have to really put anything behind it because obviously we're not going to have heard everything, but um, just, you know. Oh, no, it would just be a like public some, service announcement, you know. Yeah, here's some stuff coming out. Oh, that's a good idea. Well, I make a note to myself so I don't forget about it. Uh, Marty, what else have you been listening to? All right. I don't remember who sent this. Might be Steve in the chat. It might have been Rick. One of those it came around the same time, but I finally cracked the seal on this and gave it a spin today, as a matter of fact. Vanix, um, Dark Season. Hmm. I don't know where these guys are from, but it's um, on Shadow Kingdom Records. And I don't know what I think about this one. First song comes on, it's like, oh, there's a bit of venom going on here. Cool. Okay. Um, then it kind of goes to a sleazier rock thing and then it goes to kind of a punk sleazy rock metal thing It's like a conglomeration of metal punk and rock, um, which musically it's pretty good. It's interesting, but it's kind of an unremarkable singer. He's, uh, when he's yelling and kind of in the metal range, he kind of reminds me of Kronos a little bit, but not, doesn't have the character, um, I don't think, did you send that to me, Scott? Huh. Okay. Well, thanks. <laughs> I'm bitching about it. <laughs> enjoy. Enjoy my, Working thanks for your dumb gift. <laughs> <laughs> but um, no, it's one of those things, you know, if you're in, into like midnight, I mean, midnight's way more metal than this. There's a bit of, like I said, the rock side on here. I, li I like the sleaziness of it, but like, unremarkable singer. I wish the guy had some chops because he has no melodious um he's got no singing chops he's just kind of a yeller and he gets a little tries to go a little bit melodic but it just doesn't work if he stayed metal or maybe kept it a little more punk i don't know he just he kind of does a little of everything but doesn't fit in any of it I don't, so that's first impression i listened to it once and i listened to the whole thing so i didn't be like oh i gotta take this out this sucks but it's it's missing something i think it's a singer the music is interesting like i said it's kind of a cool conglomeration but yeah <laughs> he plays in midnight well wow i got the midnight uh thing that, right but <laughs> sorry scott <laughs> i love it it was great i will listen to it again and again <laughs> cheers man all right bill you're back all right, let's grab, and we're going all into the vinyl here. Let's see what we got first. Now, this, a band that I love and just continues to be awesome. The new Abigor here, title oh, that I cannot pronounce. <laughs> I won't, <laughs> won't even try, but yes, the new the new Abigor. So just, you know, ever, if you know Abigor, I'm going to move this down so you can see stuff a little better here. And you can see the blankie. You gotta see the blankie. Yeah, so the, the signature, the signature move there. Yeah, all about the blankie. But anyway, <laughs> uh, you know, Abigor just baroque. I call them baroque black metal. They're very, they're just very classy and intellectual, but still having that savage, evil, satanic vibe. You know, this is just another great album from them. The last three or four they've done have just been incredible in my mind. So. Nothing, nothing that you would dislike here. I mean, I love it on the back where it says, when the God's putrid blood is dripping through the cracks of eternity, the dead will mate with the children of the earth. That about says it all for this record there. I think, uh, you know, so I would highly recommend this. If you have not listened to this yet, and if you've ever liked any of the, you know, 
Abigor stuff in probably in the last 10 years. I think you'll love this. Right on. That band, yeah. I love the early stuff. I never listened to them, which is weird. Yeah. But they got really too complex. Like, wow. They got, they <laughs> went kind of off the charts crazy. And I kind of had a hard time following them after that. Yeah. I can see that. I love the early stuff too. I mean, I, I pretty much, I, as, as the saying goes, I celebrate the entire catalog. So I, sure. do, I do love it. Yeah. Yep. Yep. Yeah, I've not heard a lot of the later stuff. You know, I used to have all the early stuff and like it, but um, I randomly found a used copy of Time is the Sulfur in the Veins of the Saint mm-hmm. sometime mm-hmm. last year. And it, you're right, Marty, it's insanely complex, but I also really liked it. It mm-hmm. reminded me in a way, it, was like, it sounded like their version of Grand Declaration of War mm-hmm. to an extent. So yeah. even though it's the, just a couple of songs and they're very long, it... Uh, yeah, it kind of impressed me quite a bit. So it's a band I'm meaning. It, it's on the list of bands to circle back around and uh, catch up on since I've missed a bunch of their stuff. All right, Alan. Okay, well, um, <clears throat> since uh, we're having a little fun with Scott. Uh, in the chat. <laughs> okay, if some other shitty oh, CDs Scott. he sends somebody, great, no, thanks. No, 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 no. Oh, oh, oh sorry. No, Scott, didn't, <laughs> Scott didn't send this to me. Scott was hoping somebody else would send this to him. I've got your disc. I've got your disc. <laughs> <laughs> the uh, this is the uh, Sacred Outcry, um, Towers of Gold. Um, I, I showed that you know I'd gotten this in a recent video, and Scott commented uh, uh, lambasting me in the uh, chat because apparently he also tried to order it from the same distro where it was on sale, and uh, it was out of stock. <laughs> you got the last to empty his I, cart. I tried to or- I was trying to order it too. I was going to order from now yeah, Nameless Grave, and then it yep, was out yep. of stock, and I was like, "Fuck, <laughs> like, I'm never going to find it." <laughs> okay, in that case, uh, Bill and Scott. Oh, well, look at I've this! I've got your disc. I've got your disc. <laughs> Marty, tell Al I'm not talking to him right now. <laughs> <laughs> but I'm out of here. <laughs> if it makes you feel any better, Scott. There were a couple of things that got sniped out of my cart when I went to ch- uh, check out too. So uh, the, the cart was supposed to have 14 or 15 CDs in it and uh, only got uh, through the PayPal gate with 13. <laughs> so it, it happened to me as well. But uh, yeah, yeah, we've talked about this one a lot, so I don't need to go in depth with it. Uh, you know, excellent power metal album that came out last year. Kellen and Marty uh, dissected it in great detail. Uh, very thoughtful reviews of it. And yeah, it, it's really good. I had just been waiting for a chance to pick it up for a decent price because every time I looked for it, it was always like, you know, $22 plus shipping plus tax. I'm just like, no. (laughs) But uh, yeah, when Nameless Grave had their recent uh, 50% off sale, I'm just like, mine. (laughs) And and apparently stepped on uh, several of our friends' toes in the process. Uh, I'm crying here. (laughs) Sorry, not sorry. (laughs) But uh, yeah, so far, some other folks commented in that video too that they also got uh, a bunch of stuff coming from Nameless Grave. So yeah, I think we definitely helped them with their goal of cleaning a lot of old stock out of their distro. They're apparently setting up a new web store, moving to a new platform. And so they just wanted to clear out as much stuff as they could so they didn't have to relist and re-enter a whole bunch of things where they only had one or two copies left. So uh, yeah, 50% off. That is definitely a way to get people to... uh, vacuum up a whole bunch of stock you want to move <laughs> but yeah. uh yeah well while i just sit here and kind of enjoy my sacred outcry cd for a couple of minutes marty i'll pass it on over to you and it's got to make and scott and bill the thing that makes it worse is alan just thinks that cd's okay yeah <laughs> i said it was excellent it's, it's it, okay <laughs> it does it, it you know you've admitted yourself to it does drag a little in the middle yeah. of the story there there's a you know there's several minutes there in the middle it's like yeah you guys could probably have move along with this just a tad better oh one thing to be clear about too and marty you know this better than i you said the the cd has an extra track or the vinyl has an extra the cd has extra tracks they had to they didn't want to make it a 2lp set so they cut like a song and part of another song off of the vinyl so don't go going don't go getting the record thinking oh i got something great because you're not getting the whole story yeah if you get a vinyl copy just be aware that there's one track that was not included on the vinyl wanted to make sure folks knew that yep Hmm. all right over to you marty i've had my fun (laughs) (laughs) well um another vclt package came in i've been weeding through it all week um david rao 
Dave Rao, thank you, thank you again. Um, you know, after seeing Alan and Aaron talk about this over the years, he uh, was had a bunch of records and the CD as well. So he figured I didn't have it and I should hear it. So, Fit for Fight by Witchcross. Uh, this is a um, High Roller Records repress of this. This CD is really good. I've listened to it a lot this week. I didn't know what to expect. I thought it'd be a little bit more new wave of British heavy metal-ish, which I guess it kind of is, but it just seemed a little bit more, less hard rocking than just more metal. I don't know. It's a, a solid. I really like the singer. Um, Alex Savage. <laughs> And um, I'm sure that is his real that's name. That's his birth name. Yeah, his, <laughs> Jesus. Jesus gave that name to him. Mr. and Mrs. Savage are quite proud. <laughs> yeah, actually, a good friend of mine down state. His name is Jeff Savage. So yeah. it, it, it can it, happen. Yeah, Savage. It, there's a chance. There is yeah. a chance it's uh, legit. But uh, yeah, I'm really impressed with this because New Wave of British heavy metal stuff. I I always have a. I always want to check it out. I like it, but it's not something I return to. I was surprised. This is probably spun five times this week it's really a solid hard rocking heavy record I, I enjoyed it you might want to fill in the gaps on this alan if there's anything i missed but not, not really much to say other than it's a really good record yeah it, it's really solid and, and rick i only have two copies of that one so uh that, <clears throat> only, only two so rick yeah. let me ask you what do you do with your little uh your your envelope system when you've got a an o-ring uh do you just throw this in the garbage or you put it in the recycle bin or uh, what do you do with that? What do you do then? Riddle me this. <laughs> Coiring minds want to know. <laughs> All right. You, you, you keep taunting it with it. Like, you know, we're going to come back like uh, you know, this time next year, Marty's grab his entire collection in those same kind of CD folders and be singing their praises. No. Know, but <laughs> this is the best thing ever. <laughs> oh, Rick. Thank you, Rick. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> You saved my life. Anyway, Bill. I think that uh, those slip cases, you just have to roll a joint in it. That's what you have to do. That's, oh, yeah. That, that's the solution right there. <laughs> you wrap, put your bong in it. Go like this and put the bong <laughs> yeah. in the center. Be like a bong holder. There you go. A bong cozy. A bong, a bong cozy. cozy. <laughs> <laughs> that's the next piece of heavy metal energy merch. It's merch a freeze bong. pipe cozy, yeah. man. <laughs> the bong cozy. That's coming next. <laughs> You heard it here first, people. All right. Anyway, uh, I think I, this was something that I know Simon talked about and Scott talked about this, that lunar, the lunar spell. I did too. I've, I've got yeah. all their stuff now. Yeah. Yeah. I'm missing one thing. Yeah. Yeah. This band. Oh my God. They're, they're really good. They have a new the, album coming out too. Oh yeah. I, I'm super excited. This is some of the best oh, glare from hell, but this is some of the best black metal going Greek black metal, you know, just it captures some of that classic Greek magic here, as well as having, you know, a lot of that second wave vibe, just, you know, demise of heaven, this one. So yeah, it's, good, it's a really good stuff. record. Yep. Yeah. Highly recommended here. So I've got, uh, I got the, uh, the other, I think it's, I don't know if it's an EP or album, the other, other release I have on CD. Cause I, I just couldn't find that one on vinyl, but this I ordered, I believe directly from their band camp. So yeah, been loving this record and I'm, I would say anybody that loves the Hellenic scene and just loves second wave black metal as well, get into this band. They're incredible. That one's very fast too. It's kind of like, you know, they're trying to do a bit of a Marduk nod of appreciation yeah. at times. Yeah. Yeah. But it's still got all that, that melody weaving through it. You know, it's far more musical than, you know, than some of the Marduk stuff. No, I love Marduk still though, but. Oh yeah, me too. New record is really good. Yeah, indeed. All right. Good pick. Good uh, good band. Alan. Uh, let's see. <clears throat> this is one Simon reviewed for the channel a little over a year ago. It was one of those late 2022 releases. So I think he got it reviewed like right at the start of 2023. Uh, just, again, took me a while to find a copy um, for a good price. But it is uh, Jade, the Pacification of Death. A really good... I death doom, but you know, they, they kind of have their own sound. It's got a little more melody to it than a lot of death doom has. They really keep the songs moving at a decent clip. Uh, it never really starts to drag or get bogged down at too slow of a tempo. Um, it's also a pretty short, compact album. They don't let the songs, you know, wallow for too long. You know, 
Death Dreams a style I like, but a lot of bands sometimes just do it kind of paint by numbers, and that can get tedious uh, pretty quickly. But I really like the Jade's approach to it. It's you know sounds pretty unique to me. It's not a genre I'm deeply invested in, so maybe there's you know five other bands doing it, and I just haven't come across them. But yeah, I really like their style on this. They're technically an international band. They've got members from a couple of different countries. But uh, yeah, hopefully they'll continue to put more stuff out. I want to say somebody mentioned they might have something out this year. But there's so many you know, up-and-coming releases that I may just <laughs> be getting my wires crossed. But yeah, if anybody missed this one, because sometimes those albums that come out at the end of the year, it's easy to overlook them. You're busy with other stuff and then you get excited about 2023 releases so yeah if this one slipped through anybody's uh, radar and they like that style jade, jade is really good uh this is one that keeps getting back into play rotation for me and it uh, has done so again recently which is why i'm showing it on the what's spinning <laughs> episode <laughs> all right yeah i kind of just realized how obvious that was halfway through the sentence uh, sorry uh, over to you, Marty. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Um, also in the Dave package was, um, this band called Triangulum Victory in Death. Super primitive, but, uh, black metal, but with a bit of a production, production value. So it doesn't sound like complete crap. And the song, this one took me about three, al three listens to get into first spin. I'm like, okay, you know, it's okay. But the more I spun it, you know, you kind of get a little more accustomed to the songs and um, they're not really inventing any new wheels here. They're just playing stripped down um, kind of barren black metal, but it, it works. It's solid, solid stuff. I enjoyed it. Thanks again. He, I think he, in his letter, kind of compared it to Tolka, but I, I think Tolka's got a little bit more rock spirit to it their riffs are a lot more catchy to me than um this but still it's i enjoy primitive raw black metal and this certainly certainly hits the spot triangulum victory in death good stuff all right i don't know that one yeah that one i'm not familiar with either i wasn't familiar with the other one either he he sent three things and i didn't have any of them so I'm like wow cool nice. <clears throat> all right, all right. Bill, what you got what do we got next here? Here is some classic kind of anarcho punk. We got the Smart Pills here with their uh, No Good, No Evil record from 1987. So this band um, had somebody from Amoebix in it. It had the, I believe it was the, I can't remember who from Amoebix, the guitarist maybe. Um, you know, female vocals. Just really good, kind of like sort of anarcho post-punk here they didn't really release a whole lot of stuff there was a there was a tape before this and then this release and then the band broke up but the this is the original version that's on uh dick from subhumans label it's on blurred records here mm -hmm. so i really love this band you know I, I i love a lot of the 80s anarcho punk stuff and everything it has that kind of haunting creepy vibe to it you know very very stark and depressing lyrics political lyrics as well you know this is a band that's kind of forgotten by a lot of people in the uh you know in the mists of time but i i love it and i would recommend it to anybody if you if you dig like stuff like crass dirt amoebics any of that kind of stuff give this one a spin as well hmm. right <laughs> Happy, only happy bills. You got to get me some of those, man. I need to cheer up more. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Alan. All right. Let's see. Uh, another one I recently found for a good price. I'd been keeping an eye out for. Uh, this is one of the only Psy albums that I didn't have. Uh, Gallows Gallery. Um, this one uh, infamously, you know, had you know, like a really weird production to it. Uh, and the band tried to pass it off as they had one of these ridiculous statements where it's like, oh, it sounds that way because it was something along the lines like they claimed they had used like, you know, some kind of secret World War II sonic weaponry audio technique. <laughs> it's just like, yeah, I don't think that got lost in translation. I think you're just making shit up, <laughs> which they pretty much were. But uh, yeah, the album ended up getting reissued really 
soon, like two or three years after the fact with a blue color instead of the orange cover where it had gotten remastered and it reportedly sounds much better, but I, I ended up with an orange cover copy. So uh, this album does not tend to be a fan favorite. Um, and, you know, it's taken a few plays. I've kind of started to figure it out. I don't think it's horrible. Um, the, the production is a bit distracting. It's I don't think it's unlistenable the way some people describe it. But I do see that it's, yeah, you know, it's a little bit too present. Uh, it does get distracting. Uh, another thing with this one is Mariah is doing uh, pretty much completely clean vocals. But at the same time, it's kind of clean with quotes you know he's never going to sound you know like a jeff tate or anybody <laughs> but uh you know he's definitely not trying to do any of like you know overly extreme vocals he's just kind of singing in his normal voice musically they're sort of um they're playing up some different elements too like there's a lot of kind of like guitar hero solos on here which is not something you really associate with psy um, the songs have a little bit more of like a late sixties psychedelia rock vibe going to them. I mean, it's still passed through a psi filter. So, I mean, it still sounds, you know, all kinds of, you know, crazy weird stuff, but yeah, yeah it's kind of, you know, less extreme. Um, I really hesitate to say the word more mainstream because nothing psi has done ever sounded mainstream. But it's a little more straightforward of a listen. There's not as many twists and turns and oddness. And I guess that disappointed some fans. So I'm not sure. Lyrically, it's still very much it, the same kind of stuff they always do, where it's, you know, kind of twisted, you know, kind of macabre. Um, so if you kind of read along or you can figure out what he's saying, it still very much feels like a side recording there. But yeah, it's definitely, you know, one of the sort of, you know, odder ones in their catalog, particularly because it's not as odd as the rest of their catalog. But I have most of their stuff kind of, this was a band I didn't mind filling in some of the gaps with. A lot of their CDs have gotten just stupid expensive, though, because they've been out of print now for 15 years. Um, so all the copies have been sucked up. And most of the time you look them up on Discogs and so it's like, I don't want to pay $30 or $40 a piece for these, but this one showed up for a really good price. I went ahead and snagged it. And uh, yeah, it, it was worth uh, figuring this one out, you know, while it took, you know, maybe a few more listens than normal. That's to be expected with this band. So if you're unfamiliar with the band, this is not the place to start. If you're a casual fan, you can probably do without this one, but uh I don't think it's quite as you know wretched as uh, some reviews would have you believe. This is not like you know, more, this is not their version of you know Ill Divinus or anything like that. It's not on that level. It's just less extreme and less odd than what you might want from them. So one step closer to filling out the side discography. Right on. So it doesn't seem like you have too many holes left, do you? I don't. Actually, uh, funnily enough, the last piece has arrived. I haven't had a chance to play it yet. So there actually are. I, I now have the full set of uh, Psy full-length albums on Ooh. CD. Nice. Um, the last one is funny. Maybe I haven't played it, so I wasn't going to show it tonight, but we might circle back around to it if uh, there's story time later. Because it was kind of a... I think I told you the first part of the story, Marty. It was kind of a funny purchase. <laughs> Okay. But we'll save that for later. Sounds good. And the last of the package that Dave sent me, um, Norwegian black metal band called Himland. Um, for Fedrinus Torer. I don't know. My Norwegian is, <laughs> I can't even consider it shaky. It's non-existent. But, it um, translates as shaved cat, funnily enough. <laughs> <laughs> Hairless cat and cardigan sweater. That's <laughs> is the cardigan made from the cat's fur? <laughs> ah, yeah. Yeah. You, you could kind of match, kind of. There we yeah. go. Crocheted. Yeah. But um, yeah, this came out in 2023. Newest release on Edge Circle Productions. Never heard of this band either. So a little bit more polished 
better produced black metal um metal archives considers them nature paganism is their um their what they're all about and very atmospheric the the songs feel a bit long but uh two four six seven tracks it's it doesn't drag it's it's a good record i've been kind of impressed i need to spend a little bit more time with it but um black metal the way you'd expect it well produced varied a little bit of atmosphere i mean the cover kind of suggests that there's something going on other than you know demons and naked ladies and on altars and all that stuff so what else good. is there i know what's what well it's no good then I just, I'm, <laughs> I'm out <laughs> I don't want to see people harvesting weed. I want naked ladies. <laughs> if I was interested in weed, I'd take geography class, man. Yeah. <laughs> Leading export of Albania. <laughs> Good album, though. I enjoy it. Thank you again, Dave, for the stuff. It was fun. A lot of fun to dig through the things I have not heard yet. So, Bill. All right. Let's see what we got next here. In the stack of things. Ah, yes. You'll recognize this, of course. This is the most recent. If I can see it here. Sulfurion here. Oh, yeah. Yes. Mm. In this bookcase there. And this band just keeps getting better and better. As I, you know, I'm sure everybody here is familiar with them. I, I, it's like they take the best elements of bands I don't really love that much and make it better. Like there's at times I hear like some of the stuff Behemoth did, but they do it better. I hear elements of, of early, the good Nile stuff, the early Nile stuff, mm -hmm. like Black Seeds of Vengeance. I even hear hints of some of the early Watain, but it's better than, it's like it's better than all those bands combined, though. They just elevate it to just such a majestic level of, of evil, and they really feels like it captures that Lovecraftian cosmic horror that, mm -hmm. you know... And of course, everybody talks about you can't see the the uh, the horrible gaping butthole cover with the slipcase. So you know, I don't know if that's a plus or a minus. You decide for yourself. But yeah, New well, judging by your last comment, you'd think you'd want to see that. Yeah, yeah of course. <laughs> yeah, of course. course. Yeah, yeah. But anyway, yes, sulfurion, great stuff. All right, I still haven't got that yet. I'm so behind in the times here. <laughs> no Sorry. butthole, no sale. <laughs> yeah, yeah, you're right, but it's there. You just got to pull the slip cover off. It's there. It's hiding. <laughs> right. Yeah. No, that's a nice one, Bill. Yeah, excellent band, and I agree. It seems like they're they're just getting better, and they're one of the bands that really captures that Lovecraft vibe uh, much better than a lot of bands. So, couldn't agree more. All right, Alan, what you got? I've got uh, Thin Lizzy's Renegade. Oh, that. Not one of the better known bands or albums in their catalog. Uh, I've always had kind of a soft spot for this one. I thought it had some really good songs on it. And when uh, we revisited Thin Lizzy with Pat for our discography deep dive a while back, you know, playing this one back again, I was like, man, that one's got even more good songs on it than I remembered. So, yeah, you know, once again, it got filed in the back of brain to uh, you know pick up hard copy when found at right price. The right price being about five bucks for something like this. There's no need to go out and spend, you know, eighteen ninety nine in shipping for a copy. And so, yeah, five dollars it was. But uh, yeah, it's a very overlooked album. You know, it's one of the Snowy Shaw albums. That era of the band gets a little bit bypassed for reasons. I think the albums are actually pretty good from that era. They just don't usually get ranked as the most popular ones from folks. Yeah, Ian Ian's got good taste. He knows what's going on. But yeah, this one's got some great ones. Mexican Bloods, one of those perfect kind of pretty sad kind of songs. Not a ballad, but you know, it's it's another one of these that tells you know a tale of you know love gone wrong the way that uh, you know only Phil Lynott could. But uh, you got you know a really good rocker in Hollywood, Down on Your Luck, Angel of Death's a very heavy song for them. It feels like that song could have been on Thunder and Lightning a few years later. Uh what else is on here? The print on this one's really hard to read. Uh, Leave This Town's on here uh, is good. The title track, Renegade, is another one that's just got that perful, perfect sort of you know wistfully sad vibe that you know Phil was just so great at doing. So yeah, if you never checked out any of their later albums, I definitely would recommend giving this one a spin. Um, it, I, I put it really 
high in the Thin Lizzy discography, and I stand by that. Uh, it's a very good set of songs. It's well done. The album sounds really good, too. It's got a really strong production to it that complements the music. And But yeah, it just doesn't get the same attention that, say, you know, Thunder and Lightning or Johnny the Fox does. But uh, it, it's every bit as good. It's right there, you know, with those kind of albums on that tier. All right. Well, this happens every once in a while, but I recently-ish bought a couple CDs from some uh, Discog seller. And when the package came, he threw in a couple extra CDs, which, cool. <laughs> you know, nice. One of them was the first Stygian Crown album, which I haven't spun yet. But oh, that's good. Yeah, after Ke Kellen's review of the newest one, I'm excited to check it out. And this one is uh, Grave Spell Frost Crown. This is a self financed huh. release. Um, they are from, oopsie, they are from San Diego, California, listed as black death metal, which, yeah, there's a, a lot of melodic runs on here that kind of gives me a bit of a Swedish vibe, a melodic Swedish death metal um, feel to it. Songs are good. It has kind of a, when did this come out? 2018. And it feels, listening to it, it's got an older vibe to it, which I liked. So one or two listens, I need to process it some more. Again, a lot of this stuff is relatively newish. So, but another, it's cool to get a package of something I had no clue on. It's any, anything can happen, right? And um, yeah. it's a solid, it's a solid band. It's kind of a bummer. They're unsigned. Looks like they have been all along too. They put out... Yeah, in, independent. They put out two full-length albums in their independent band, and the uh, hmm. three EPs, three EPs and two full-lengths. So, more power to them for keeping the flame going and alive. And you don't really need a record label anymore. You just don't. You just don't. You just need to have good networking skills. The internet is there for you to utilize and exploit. But um, Grave Spell, decent band. Um, mixing it up a bit, old sound. Sounds promising. I like the name. Grave yeah. Spell. It's, uh, that's a cool moniker. Yeah, absolutely. All right, Bill. All right. Let's see what's next in the pile here. Let's see. <laughs> the frostbitten Nordic climate of San Diego, California. <laughs> <laughs> yes. <laughs> Speaking of some dungeon synth, here we go. Aubelette Al here. This mm -hmm. is uh, some really good dungeon synth. I believe this is... I got this... Probably this past summer. I'm trying to remember if this is on out of season. I don't think so, but I got it from. Um, this has a bit. It's kind of like Dungeon Synth meets John Carpenter. Actually, it's like a hybrid of the two. So there's a little bit more atmospheric keyboard. It doesn't quite sound the cat. It's not so super thin Casio like a lot of Dungeon Synth is. Um, you know, of course, it's all instrumental and everything like that. You've got your classic. You know, like this this obelisk here in your little figure, but I liked it because it was described as kind of having a John Carpenter, Alan Howarth vibe, and it definitely does. It definitely lives up to that, but it still feels like it could be, uh, you know, like a weird love child of those two and and uh, early Mortis, you know. So it scratches that itch if you want something that gets you the the hip kind of '80s synth and then the '90s kind of fragile, you know rolling your 20 sided die in the in the basement on your card <laughs> table kind of dungeon sim check out the uh the obelette there cool and you got a cool there's like a i don't know if it's an orc or an ogre in the logo there with a with a morning star or a mace so points what for that what label is that on bill let me look here i gotta see oh it's it is on out of season yeah i was gonna say i thought it was right on. right there out of season so nice. i was gonna say Probably is. I think I got it from Nuclear War now, because he. I know he carries a lot of the out of season stuff as well. So, yeah, check it out. Okay, we're just gonna watch you resleeve on camera. That's yeah, always. No. Oh my god! <laughs> <laughs> everybody, take everybody take it all in. Everybody take it all in. There, resleeving. <laughs> the embarrassment. Oh, it's done. <laughs> <laughs> didn't even. Didn't even dislodge his blankie. That's a pro. I know. That's I'm still. I'm, I'm still safe under the blanket. <laughs> it's okay. It's okay to to 
three sleeve if you have a blankie on it. That's, that's, that's <laughs> you're expected to. You're expected to if you yeah, have a blankie that's on. The amendment there. to the rule. <laughs> All right, Alan, what you got? Uh, just busting balls. Sorry. Sounds <laughs> good. Yeah. yeah. Hello to Sunday. Uh, yes. Yeah, Sunday also got sucked into the uh, nameless grave. Uh, distro sale yeah. recently so uh <laughs> sounds like yeah she just got her package hope you got a lot of good stuff in there uh, okay um next one for me i'll get into i've got a few vinyl ones i uh, picked this up at a recent record show it's the uh, hellion ep from back around 83 this is one of those records that while old it has never been hard to find it's never been expensive uh, i had just never picked up a copy Somebody had one there. It's in decent shape. So, and I was buying some other stuff from him. So I was like, you know, if I throw that in too, I can probably negotiate a price where I'm almost getting this for free, um, which is how it worked out. But yeah, you know, this is, um, if folks aren't familiar with the band, this is, you know, Anne Boleyn's act. You know, she went on to work with, uh, in front kind of a no, new Renaissance records uh, in the 80s. And then, of course, Hellion Records uh, after that. Um, it was Hellion's one of those very typical early 80s LA bands that's kind of straddling the you know, glam versus real metal direction. You know, and, and you very much hear that on the track list. This is an EP, there's only four songs on it. You know, Backstabber's the winner. You know, that, that's you know a really solid tune. It should have been on like a metal massacre volume back then. I'm not sure why it wasn't. This band would have been perfect on like Metal Massacre one or two. Um, but yeah, you know, some of the other songs like uh, Looking for a Good Time. Do I really need to describe what that's going to sound like? The, the title tells you what this song is going to sound like. Um, I, I don't need to make the obvious, you know, Motley Crueism type comparison. So I'm just not going to. Uh, so yeah, you know, they're, they're kind of, you know, you know, one part party and one part spiked wristband. Um, yeah, you know, and a lot of bands were doing that at the time. You know, they didn't quite know which direction to go for. You wanted to be cool and metal, but you also wanted to, you know, get a song played on the radio and get some attention from a label. So you, a lot of bands kind of hedged their bets. You know, Hellion did, you know, some other recordings. They made some singles and stuff. They never really quite seemed to get there. And, you know, T to be honest, they don't necessarily have the best reputation amongst fans, I've noticed. Their stuff tends to get, you know, kind of negative reviews. And I'm not really sure if that's a reflection of just that it's very early 80s, and so for some folks it's maybe a little too tame. I don't know if it's a reaction to Anne's, you know, label practices later on. She, you know, I've read more than a couple of interviews where people said she was not always easy to work with, and Bands weren't necessarily happy with the way things played out if they were signed to New Renaissance and such. Yeah, so I don't know if some of you know that kind of spills over into people's perception of Hellion's music. Can't really say, but um, it, it was worth picking up. Backstabbers, an awesome track. Um, they're not the best band in history, but yeah, if you like that very early 80s sound from LA, it, it's a band that is certainly you should know uh, they're worth checking out. So, yeah, uh, if anybody has any insights specifically on why people often seem down on Hellion, please add something to the live chat or leave a comment below. I'm just not quite sure why this band seems to be on some people's shit list. There are much, much worse bands that get more praise than Hellion. So Is it I'm just because it's, it's kind of, you know, on the outside looking in, it almost seems like it's a Canadian version of Bitch. Betsy I, Bitch. You, you know, could have, I mean, maybe they're associated, yeah, with and that. Betsy had a bigger label, you know, Metal Blade, and I don't yep. know that I necessarily care about either, but, but yeah. And, and Hellion and Bitch, they actually did a split back then. I, ah. I want to say it was a seven inch split. So, yeah, so you had that. Uh, you know, there, there were definitely comparisons and you know, parallels, even you know, when both bands were active back then. Yeah. So, yeah, it, not sure, but uh, I was I was happy to pick it up. Uh, Again, it's not a hard item to find, or and it's certainly not an expensive item. If it sounds like it might be of interest to anyone out there, you won't have trouble affording a copy or finding a copy. All right. Well, Rick asked me if I ran that last album through the, the sketch filter, which obviously I didn't. So, I mean, this one, obviously... <laughs> 
we all know, yeah. but um, Sargeist, Let the Devil In, this album rules. It just is so good. I'm a big fan of Finnish black metal, and Sargeist, in my opinion, it's better than Shatrog's other band, Horna, better than a lot of bands in Finland. There's something about it. It just he gets it right with this stuff. I don't know what it is. Um, Mid pace, just really good, nasty vocalist on here. The songs are super catchy. That's the thing about the finish, the finish stuff. Super catchy. I don't know if it's a punky vibe or what it is, but man, out of all the star guys, there's some good ones, but let the devil in is definitely a favorite. Um, yeah. Don't know what else to say. It's one of those bands that most people know about. And, um, if it's a Horner or Sargeist sitting next to each other, I'm going for Sargeist usually. But out of all their stuff, I like a lot of it, but Let the Devil In is a, a definite favorite. It's been in the shop spinning this week off and on, so good stuff. There's some fast stuff on it too, Wait, It isn't all mid-paced, but they they make the mid-paced stuff work really well because the riffs are so catchy. They're nasty, dissonant, but still catchy. There's a memorable dissonance to them, if that makes any sense. Good stuff. Big fan. Bill. Yep. Indeed. You can't go wrong with that Finnish filth there. Yep. It's always good stuff. Oh yeah. All right. This is something, this is a band that are from the U S here house of Atreus or Atreus, I guess this is their oh, new yeah. EP orations here. So this is a band that I would say that early on, they kind of sounded like almost like an Argo slant ripoff. You know what I mean? It was kind of mm -hmm. obviously in that style, you know, like very epic melodic, death metal you know super catchy harmonies and they've kind of brought their own sound to it you know i mean obviously there's no sketch there's no sketch there with this band from what i can tell you know but it's all very it's all roman you know roman empire <laughs> theme a lot of it having to do with kind of like roman history and gladiatorial battles and that sort of thing so just they do a really awesome cover on here of uh Running Wilds, Riding the Storm. Hmm. It, mm -hmm. It's excellent, actually. Like, I was surprised at how good it was. So <laughs> it tells you where else they're drawing influence from. <laughs> Guilt-free like, Argos Lent. What's up, Mitch? How you doing? <laughs> yeah, exactly. You can say it's guilt-free <laughs> guilt Argos Lent. Exactly. You, know, you want something that sounds like that without feeling like a horrible person for enjoying it? There you go. You know? But, yeah, yeah this I would recommend. And there are other stuff, too. They had an album... They're, they had, they've had two full lengths. This is an EP. The first full length was on Dark on Dark Descent. I think it was called The Spear and the Icor that follows. And then the second one, which was also on Iron Bonehead, I can't remember the title of it. Something like something of Ixion or something like that. But check this band out. If you're if you're into like melodic death metal that's not super saccharine and cheesy, it's kind of more doesn't necessarily sound Scandinavian. It definitely sounds American, but it's still super catchy and very aggressive all right hmm. oh. yeah that's that's a nice pick bill i heard that uh, a couple of months ago when it came out and yeah it's it's pretty good yeah it delivers it does yep mm -hmm. all right uh let's see something I picked up uh, again very cheap recently at a record show uh, to date it's the last sabotage studio album poets and madmen and this thing's like over 20 years old now, which is just kind of crazy to think about. Yeah, 2001. This band's been inactive for almost a quarter of a century now. Um, John has been, you know, reportedly working on material for one more studio album. He's been saying in interviews for months that uh, he wants to put out one more really, really good top-notch sabotage album and then retire from it. He's just like, I, I will get you one more album, and that's going to be it. So... We will see. Fingers crossed. Maybe a late 2024 or 2025 kind of timeline, he says. Uh, but anyway, this is, yeah, the last thing we have gotten from them uh, so far. I got this when it came out. Never got into it very much. It had one song on it that I liked a lot called Morphine Child, but the rest of it never did click with me. It, it very much at the time felt like it was, you know, yet another one that they, you know, had done with, you know, Paul O'Neill. And it kind of felt like they had sort of run out of ideas that they were just sort of recycling things. You know, I, to be clear, I like the band's eighties era stuff. It's fantastic. 
I like a lot of their 90s stuff, too. I, I am not opposed to later era sabotage on principle or anything like that. I like several of their rock opera albums, but it felt like they had been kind of, you know, losing their path. The one before this wake of Magellan was kind of a snooze fest. The story just did not go much of anywhere. It's a very long album. Um, And this one at the time kind of struck me the same way. You know, there's very little, action to the story so to speak and as such it just kind of it, it felt at the time like it wasn't it was kind of directionless but again for just a few bucks i was buying a big pile of cds it's just like uh if i yeah you know, I, I could get a, i basically got two cds thrown in for free and this was one i you know grabbed off the stack that was essentially cost me nothing i will give zero dollars for a sabotage album i don't know <laughs> i can do that i can afford that Revisiting it, it is better than I have given it credit for. Uh, I'll say that right up front. Good points to this. Uh, John is singing on this one. It's not Zach. And he sounds great. Uh, he, he never left the band. He was always working with them. He just you know gave up lead vocal duties. But he sounds really good throughout the album. It's definitely him. He's doing all his crazy, maniacal voices. Um, a lot of the songs are better than I remember. Going through it... Uh, a few times here in recent weeks is like, no, more and more of these do stand out as decent later era sabotage songs. Um, the story makes a little more sense to me now too. It still doesn't have much action to it, but it turns out it's actually based on a sort of a real life person, which I did not know when this came out. It's, you know, the story of like a famous South African photojournalist. He wanted to, Pulitzer Prize for, you know, taking a picture of you know, a starving child in, I think it was Sudan, in, when they were going through a massive famine and civil war in the early or mid-90s. And you know, the, the image and all the horrors he had seen kind of haunted him to the point where in real life, you know, he eventually killed himself, committed suicide about a year after winning the, uh, the Pulitzer. Yeah, so the story is loosely based on that character where... Instead of killing himself, he kind of you know got sent to an insane asylum that got abandoned, and somehow he just didn't leave, and then just stays there indefinitely. Which again, so it's like so there's a guy in an abandoned insane asylum who sits there. That's your plot. Not not, not a lot of action. Um, concept albums. That's it's kind of hard to have a concept when the concept is the guy sits there. But um, you know, regardless, one little thing, and uh, uh, it may have been Mike Villain that pointed this out to me. I had never noticed this either. In, behind the CD tray, there is actually a copy of the picture from the uh, that won the Pulitzer Prize you know, that the whole thing's kind of based around. You can't really see it. I had no idea it was there, but Mike mentioned it. So I was like, huh, I wonder if it's in my copy too, and it is. You can get just a little hint that maybe there is a picture back there. I did not pop it out. It's a relatively disturbing picture to look at. Uh, you're seeing a child that's basically a walking skeleton fall down and you know, in the process of starving to death with a vulture like pecking. Oh, that along picture? The oh, that's oh, yeah. that yeah, picture. Yeah, yeah. yeah that's that is the one the whole thing is kind of based on. Yeah, I've seen it a lot on yeah. For some album. Yeah, it's company. a very famous picture. So yeah. just, you know, if you look it up, you know, fair warning, it is, you know, it, it's a downer for sure. So, yeah, I'm glad I revisited this. It is a better album than I gave it credit for. It is still not a fantastic album. As I said, while the songs are pretty good, they just they have no story. There's no plot to them, really. If you didn't know it was a concept album, you probably wouldn't even pick up on that. The other thing the album suffers from is there's not much for the guitars to do on this album. You know, Chris Caffrey's, you know, handling the guitar work. He's a good guitarist. But it seems like they just almost forgot to write guitar parts or something. There's he, he's there. He's got some riffs. There's some solos, but they they just kind of come and go. You never register them. That they they really needed to put a little more work into that aspect of the record. I feel like I think that's why the album was kind of forgettable to me back then. The, the, you just didn't sabotage albums. You know, you you have dazzling guitar work. It's in your DNA. It's supposed to be there. And this one was kind of missing it. So at any rate, fun album to revisit. Uh, give it props that, yep, I was wrong on that one. Uh, glad I have uh, sort of gotten a better grasp on it. 
And uh, fingers crossed that John does deliver on another Sabotage album sometime in the next year or so, and that it will uh, absolutely kick ass. Here's hoping. Here's hoping. Yep. Go out. Go out in a blaze. I, yep. If, if you're going to set it up that way too, you damn well better make it a good better one. Better deliver. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. 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 Yeah, let's not let's not do Wake of Magellan Part Two. We don't need that. <laughs> <laughs> All, All right, right, Marty, your turn. No fight for the rocks either. Just to be very clear, I, I sent my copy to to Dwayne. Actually, my fight for the rock LP. Yep, he didn't have it. I thought you liked Dwayne. He wanted it. So <laughs> I kidding, sent it I'm to him. Kidding. Yeah, <laughs> oh, it's cool. Yeah, it's a uh, it's a sabotage album. Yeah, it's not a good sabotage album. So definitely. They do, they do have a couple of uh, fumbles in their catalog, but it, it, they a fantastic band, and their their good stuff more than makes up for the bad. Yeah, oh, yeah. All right. Well, in like a two week period, I ended up buying all the Monogram CDs. I got an eight CD box set, and then I ended up getting the four others that I didn't have as well. And I gotta say, it's a band to me that's been getting better and better and better. They start off as kind of a um, harsh viking black metal band with some folky elements and as they went on the folk kind of become more of a thing with them but um their latest album um yingling Otten's oda nailed it <laughs> <laughs> um this album rules it's so good the first song Freyer's blood is 10 minute long epic it, it's like the swedish enslaved I mean, they're from Sweden. They're definitely in the same. I think Enslaved is way more prog. And um, Monogarm is way, they, they really like their uh, Martin. I can't remember the guy's last name, but their, their fiddle player, he's really good. He's really, really a great fiddle player. He adds a lot to this music. But the this first song, Freyer's Blood, the, this, this album is worth getting for that song alone. Go look it up. There's a video for it. It's so good. It's so catchy powerful the mix between the clean vocals and the grim vocals is perfect the production is really sharp it's almost like i guess you could say you mix viking metal with a little bit of power metal spirit to it in some of the singing but i i really i really like this band obviously i went crazy and got all their stuff they haven't put out a bad record and for their this being their latest it it's just as solid as all of them I, it's like they keep getting better and better and better but yeah, check out uh, Yingling Otten's Ode Oop, by Monogarm, the latest album. Very good record. Highly recommend it. I enjoy the crap out of it. My kid likes it too, so victory, victory swipe there. <laughs> Bill. Victory. All right, let's see. Picked this up recently, this reissue. So Mortuary, you remember the Mexican kind of death thrash band? This is their second album that just got reissued recently, the Shine of the End. I believe it was only on cassette initially when it was first released in the mid-90s. Uh, so Iron Bonehead did a reissue of this. Um, it's Black and Images of the first album. So this album is also, I think, just about as good. You know, this really good death thrash um production's a little bit improved on this from from black and images i would say not significantly but you know it just has it captures some of the elements of some of the, like the you know at times it reminds me a little bit of statistic intent and stuff like that i hear some of that vibe it's kind of cut from that pink cloth of you know early death metal when thrash with a huge influence on it and you know I think Black and Images is a great kind of underrated record, and this one, I'm glad to finally have it because I'd only ever been able to hear it on YouTube because that cassette is super rare and hard to find, and I'm not a big cassette guy anyway. So I got to see these guys um, 2019 at Maryland Death Fest, and they were really good. They put on an excellent show. They were still, I know, they, I think they'd been inactive for a long time, but they they still performed with conviction. So check out. Shine of the End and Black and Images by Mortuary. All right. Alan. Uh, let's see. Uh, let's do this one next. <clears throat> hmm. so I'm going to run to the little boy's room real quick. So Right on. No worries. Uh, picked this up uh, cheap. Always wanted this. Every time I looked for it, it was always kind of stupid expensive. So... Held off, held off, and finally got it for like five bucks. So super happy. It's a 
live Motorhead two CD set called Everything Louder Than Everyone Else. <laughs> so kind of an easy, it, it's clever, but it's easy to mix that title up. Um, anyway, it's uh, live 1998 in uh, Hamburg, Germany. Um, two CD set, if I didn't mention it. Really good track list. Lots of cool stuff included on here. You know, some of the, you know, leader tracks um, that are really solid. It's not you know, one thing about live Motorhead albums, and I've only had a few of them here and there. Sometimes it feels like they play the exact same set that they were playing in 1984. And you, maybe I just keep getting, but they're not live albums all from 1984. They're live albums from the, you know, the mid 90s, the early 90s, the early 2000s. And you look at the track list, it's like, is there anything on here that's from post-Orgasmatron? I don't know. I, I only need to hear some of these songs live so many different times. Uh, and that's one reason I like this one. I feel like it's got you know, a really, really strong track list without it being nothing but the you know early 80s material. Uh, it's got much later tracks on it. Uh, Really good sound, really good crowd noise levels. You know, um, that's always the thing with live albums. You don't want the crowd to be too loud or you can't hear the music. But if you can't hear the crowd at all, it's like, what's it's not really doesn't sound live then. You know, the, the live albums I like get the mix kind of just right there, that Goldilocks thing. And uh, yeah, the, the crowd noise is mixed in just right here. It's at the perfect volume. You can tell the crowd's really into it. You can tell Lemmy's having a good time kind of, you know, bantering with them a bit here and there at points. So yeah, um, definitely a really strong Motorhead live outing. If, if you're looking for one uh, that does have, you know, a really strong track list, uh, and you're okay with it, including songs from albums like Bastards and uh, 1916 and stuff, this is the one to pick up. And, uh, you know, hold, cross your fingers, be patient. You can maybe find it for a good price. All right. There we go. Okay. Again, I don't know if there's anything wrong with this band or not, other than the label they're on, but Crimson Evenfall, another Finnish band. And, you know, someone didn't give this jack wagon uh, the, uh, the memo that you don't smile in black metal photos. <laughs> no, you then don't. you got this one here, too. They're doing their, you know, again, with the smiling. Come on, man. This is <laughs> this is an unhappy place, not a happy place. But this Crimson Evenfall is a collection of their all of their works on one CD. It's... <clears throat> Finnish black metal, raw, dissonant, melodic, but a little, sometimes a little bit of punky stuff slips in there with keyboards. There's keyboards on this. I, I, the one thing that um, sets them apart, I guess, they're a little bit more atmospheric in the keyboard department. But I went on this big uh, Finnish black metal kick, and this is a CD I ended up with, and I enjoyed it. Listened to it a couple times. It's on the Werewolf Records. I know that's probably problematic for most people. Um, but it's a good band. Don't know anything about their what they're into other than they put out a bunch of good black metal songs. So look it up on uh, the archives. It says they're into occultism and Satanism and shit. So there you go. That's that. Horrible cover. Exactly. Horrible cover. <laughs> <laughs> so you don't smile <laughs> your black metal. Come on. What is wrong? You put all that crap on your face and you smile. Yeah. It seems like there should be a refund at the photo shoot. <laughs> For the You'd be smiling and punks think they own you or something. <laughs> <laughs> you probably right. fired him from the band after that. They were, they were just like, you can't be smiling in these photos. What are you doing? You know, <laughs> pissed off at him. Like, what a fucking idiot. Get out of here. <laughs> yeah. Th th there's a hilarious uh, bit in a, uh, it's, it's an old, uh, it's basically the, gangster rap version of spinal tap you know, they, they made a couple of movies like that one was what cb4 but there was a smaller budget one that came out about the same time called uh fear of a black hat i've seen it it's yeah it's great it's it, great it is, a, it, it is hilarious um but yes they do they do this whole spiel where you know the band's being interviewed and you know the report's like i noticed none of you ever smile in photographs why is that and they completely just yeah go off completely unhinged like you can't be smiling and be an og gangster rapper and all this stuff <laughs> it's very much the exact same thing that you'd expect yes with the black metal crowd 
Yep. Yeah, that's a great spoof. They have, I don't know, they have their single. It's called like "Fuck the Security Guard" or whatever. Like, <laughs> yeah, <laughs> it's single. It's like NWA. So fuck the, the security, security guard. guard. You ain't a cop, but you still want to act hard. <laughs> Just yeah, in yeah. a little fitting uh, suit, got a little bit of power, so you want to act a fool. Yeah, don't get yeah. me started. I, we, we, I, I will wrap the whole album. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, I know. I know movie. that soundtrack much, much too well. <laughs> yeah, I think that movie was directed. I think it was Rusty Cundy, the guy who went. Yep. He went on to do Tales from the Hood, which is. A, yep. I love that movie. Which is yeah. a great. Yeah, great. Uh, there's a lot of good movie. people in that. Um, yeah, Martin. Is it Martin Lawrence? No, uh, I, I can't. Yeah, the like, guy. From, the, the kid from. There's the kid from. Uh, was it Weird Science? Yeah, he's one of the 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 gangsters in it. Uh, there's yeah the the bigger guy. Martin something. But I mean, he was in a lot of bigger stuff. The the lady that plays the reporter, she was in Silence of the Lambs. Was it Chris uh, Rock in C B four? He was Chris in Rock C-B- was in C B four, yeah. So that was the yeah. uh, that was the big oh. budget, you know, major release one. This was uh, like a you know almost independent level kind oh, of okay. uh, release. Yeah. But, yeah, yeah. It's really, really funny if you especially if you know that you know the you know sort of you know gangster metal and in but also the pop culture uh rap <laughs> stuff from right there around the <laughs> <of> <laughs> <laughs> uh oh what happened yeah we, we, we derailed it but because yeah you you actually met somebody else who is just as big a nerd about this movie and it's me and like yeah. i knew exactly what you were talking about so frosty let's rap metal <laughs> yeah <laughs> yep anyway with anyway. yeah with that, with that said, yeah, fuck the security guards. So anyway, uh, let's go. We're been going with some black metal. Let's go with some other black metal. So I know, Alan, this is something you've talked about this band, and I'm a big fan of this band as well. A little Funeral Winds. This is not the most oh, recent cool. one. But this is the one from last year, Stigmata yep. Mali. Yep. So this band has been around, I mean, for, I know at this point, it's probably, I don't know, maybe, maybe 30 years almost at it's least. Probably you know? so, yeah. Yeah. They have that God Slayer Zool record that probably goes back to like maybe 96, 97. I think that's one of their first records. But this mm-hmm. this is just another really good kind of second wave style, but not sounding Norwegian. Not so, you know, it's just got some really memorable scathing riffs, you know, of course, really raspy, evil vocals, you know. I mean, it it, it ticks all the boxes for you know, your classic black metal, of course, you know, he's got his gauntlets, he's got his scary knife, his, you know, his, his hooded robe, but it's great. It's great. Like you can't, I mean, I, I continue to love everything this band puts out. It's always at least decent. You know, they've never put out a record that I think is embarrassing or subpar. So yeah, I'm, I have not picked up that new one. I don't know if it's actually physically available, the new one yet. Is it? It should or, be. It should yeah. Be. Yeah, yeah, I'll have to look for it. But yeah, Stigmata Molly, Funeral Winds, you know, and any Funeral Winds, I think you, if you, if you're into the classic kind of second wave black metal sound, you'll dig that. It's funny you showed that because I uh, went down state a couple of weeks ago with my kid to do some record shopping and I got all three of these used for 16 bucks a piece. I haven't spun any of them yet. Oh, yeah. The Nuclear War Now reissues of them. Yeah. So yeah, sixteen bucks a piece. I figured, heh. that's a good deal. I haven't got them. I haven't spun them yet. Been, mm-hmm. Vinyl yeah. hasn't been in my. Uh, I haven't had time for it really. But yeah, what you what you got, Alan? Yeah, but uh, yeah, nice pick, Bill. I have. Uh, I still need to work my way back through their catalog some more. Just haven't gotten to it yet. But yeah, I've been uh, really liked the one they did this year and that one from last year. I mean, it, that one got stuck in my head enough that when the new one came out, I was like, oh yeah, let's check back in with them. And yeah, really dig the new one. Uh, let's see. Let's do a, a vinyl one next. Um, had never heard this. And uh, th- this copy is kind of used. To, and no, there was no uh, no no hiding the, condi- the condition issues. The vinyl is really clean. But yeah, the cover has seen some better days. It's the Nasty Savage EP Abstract Reality. And yeah, I, the guy was reasonable on the price. He's just like, I'm not asking much for it because i understand the cover's messed up uh, so it's like okay ended up getting it from him and uh, yeah kind of surprised i had never 
like I said, I've never heard this. I didn't realize that the band, you know, trended this much into sort of, you know, a technical thrash direction at this point in their career. I, I really know, you know, their earlier stuff, the, the self-titled, I've heard, you know, some of the demo stuff where it's, you know, a little bit more raw, chaotic, um, kind of, you know, U.S. power metal that, you know, we've talked about before. But uh, it definitely leaned, you know, thrash. They were one of the more aggressive sounding bands. But on this one, they're definitely going for, you know, sort of a more uh, intricate sound on the tracks. And they actually do it pretty well. It's a really good vocal performance still from Nasty Ronnie. I like it because it still sounds like him. You know, he, he's not trying to sound like, you know, he's traded in the pit bull for a shaved cat or anything like that. <laughs> um, so, you know, it still very much, you know, has that attitude you know, of earlier Nasty Savage. But yeah, the, the instrumentation, you know, they're definitely you know, getting tighter. You know, they've, you know, matured, grown up, uh, expanded, whatever euphemism you want. You know, they're uh, they're moving away from just, you know, the old uh, chops and trying something different. And it probably just came at the wrong time because, you know, here, here's a late 80s release from a, you know, band that was big on that scene. They had a huge influence on the early death metal bands. But while those early death metal bands are, you know, starting to, you know, uh, come out and drop their first releases, he here's a band from that same scene that's going into a technical thrash direction. Probably not the time to do that. Um, you know, they, they also unfortunately had a new, I forget if it was the bassist or drummer was new for this release. And a few months after this came out, he was killed in a car wreck. So, you know, they had that uh, happen to them at the same time. So... Nasty Savage, I think they got one more album out after this one, but there was a bit of a gap. Yeah, the, the band uh, just never quite never quite got over you know that next hump uh, on the road to success. But yeah, I was kind of pleasantly surprised. I didn't expect it to have that kind of sound. I thought they did well on it. So kind of a cool EP and kind of cool discovering what they were up to at that time. Thoughts on Nasty Savage, anybody? I it's been ages since I've spun them. I have a handful of their records. Yeah, mm -hmm. yeah. It's yeah. been a long time since I'd heard any of their stuff uh, at all. And like I said, I'd never heard that one. If there's a complaint with this, um, I will say, I, I get what they were going for with the kind of you know uh, Dolly esque cover art. I don't think it's particularly well done. Um, you know, when you look at some of the things no. up close, it's just like yeah. Yeah, it was it was a local artist. He had done other artwork for them, but uh, it, you know, you're, you're releasing this on Metal Blade. This is a uh, let's put it this way: Fate's warning called, and they kind of giggled about your album cover. That that should tell you something about. Your and the funny <laughs> thing is, Nasty Savage had covers like that where Nasty Ronnie was smashing TVs. He's had like the the wrestling thing going on live. It's oh, yeah, like yeah, he completely was the oh, opposite of the cover artwork. You know, it had no, there's no indication mm -hmm. from that cover art, what you were going to get on the album, you know? No, yeah. not really. And, and a, uh, by all accounts, you know, off stage, he was an incredibly nice, helpful, supportive guy. Yeah. Um, there's a big entry in the obituary uh, biography where, you know, those guys mentioned, you know, when they first, you know, they're like, you know, 14, 15 years old and had gotten, you know, the, the death metal bug. They went to Ronnie's house. They figured out where he lived and basically like went up to the door and was like, we didn't even know what the hell we were doing. We just wanted to talk to the guy. And, you know, apparently Ronnie's mom answered the door and there's these two little, you know, like tween kids sitting there. It's like, uh, we'd like to talk to the nasty savage vocalist. And she like turns around. She's like, uh, Ronnie, there's some kids here to talk to you. Apparently he went out and hung out with them for like hours, answered all their questions, told them like a lot of just, you know, not just like, you know, patronizing them, but really like, you know, if you kids are serious about starting a band, here's some shit you need to know right off the bat about how to handle yourselves, about, you know, how to get shows, about how not to fuck things up. Uh, you know, there, there's a lot of nice testimonials about him being willing to help, you know, other bands when he was already a name thing on the scene and others, you know, were just barely getting their start. So uh, cheers to uh, Nasty Ronnie for not being nasty to uh, other people. Right on. Yeah, that's awesome. Okay. I haven't spun this in a while, and I pulled it out the other day, and it still holds up. It's a solid record. It's the, the third album from, I can't remember where they're from. I think they're from, yeah, Denmark. Uh, Denmark's Paramaze. This is Immortal. 
this is um matt barlow on vocals from iced mm. earth and ashes of aries fame oh yeah and the big the big deal about this was um he had retired from metal for a while he became a cop so it'd be it'd been many years since he left um iced earth and came back and sang on this record like he's a member of the band he's even a picture of him on the inside and he wrote all the vocal harmonies and stuff the other guy i think wrote some of the most of the words but it's a solid power metal record and you know of course matt barlow you know he's got kind of a a macho <laughs> tough guy kind of power metal raspy style but he can also hit the highs too he's got a lot of character in his voice always enjoyed his vocals and um it works well in this context. It's, you mm -hmm. know, maybe a little strange, maybe hearing him outside of Iced Earth. But, you know, even some of that Ashes of Aries stuff, I've got, I think, the debut album. It's a good record. It's, it's solid. And it's good he's still doing it. He creeps up once in a while. I mean, Ashes of Aries isn't touring the world like Iced Earth ever did. But it's good that he's still, he's a very good char uh, charismatic talent vocally mm -hmm. that it's good he's still out there. But this is a immortal by paramaze it's a it's a solid record if you're into bar metal check it out it's yeah. on inner wound recordings uh i think it came out 2008 but this says 2014 it must be a reissue i don't know yeah good stuff yeah paramaze is a different band they had a bit of a push i want to say a little earlier in the 2000s maybe like 2002 2003 it was they had an album called i think legend of the bone carver that made you know some waves on you know, like you know chat forums and stuff like that. I don't know if Barlow sang on that one though. I think he came in a little bit later, but um, yeah, a pretty good band if you like, especially that early early two thousands uh, U.S. power metal sound. You know, kind of like some of the stuff you guys were talking about on the Album Club recently. Pyramids would kind of fit in with some of those acts like uh, Pharaoh and uh, mm. and their uh, Crescent Shield and stuff yep. stuff like that. Same zip code at least. All right, Bill. All right, let's see what we got next here. Up, oh, so this band, this I got in a. This was like a super cheap, like one of the Hell's Headbangers. I think it was like the uh, five for seventy-five. This band, Alms, here mm -hmm. from Maryland, really good doom metal uh, with an organ. It's super melodic. Like specific, specifically, I remember the second side here. These three songs: the offering, Deuces Low, and Hollowed. Man, it is catchy stuff. Got female vocalist, male and female vocals. Um, Justin Stubbs artwork by him. And I think that's probably where I first heard somebody talk about this when when he was still making videos and everything like that. Because he had said that he like did the artwork for this, and normally he's like, I don't typically check out the bands that I do artwork for, but he's like, for some reason, I decided to check them out, and they ruled. And he's right, they do rule. Um, just really good, like I said, 70s kind of, you know, psychedelic doom, but it's just a cut above, I feel like, most bands of that style, just with the songwriting and memorability of the organ lines and the guitar lines. So this, I, like I said, I got this for a steal. I think it was, it was like probably 12 bucks. So I would highly recommend it. And I think it is also on, uh, I want to say it's on High Roller, probably. Or something like, or not High Roller, maybe a Shadow Kingdom, something of that nature. So yeah, it's a Shadow Kingdom one. Yeah, really good stuff though. Mm -hmm. What's up, Glenn? Hey, Carl. All right, Alan. Yeah, that's a good one. I love the uh, the lead track on that one, Bill. Dead Water. It's, oh yeah. Yeah, that one's just got cool. And you're right, it's got that '70s groovy thing, but it's actually it's a cut above. I, I agree with yeah. you completely. It's yeah. it's a cut above a lot of the bands do. A lot of the bands doing that I feel just a little too laid back lifeless sometimes that, that album moves along nicely so yeah yeah it's got a good and a good energy to it and like i said just mm -hmm. the songwriting is just exceptional they just seem to have a great ear for a for a hook in a song yeah that's a great way to put it yep good deal okay uh what do i got next uh let's do another vinyl one uh picked this up this is a reissue it's not an old one but uh yeah razor's malicious intent it's one of the only Razor albums from the older stuff I had just never heard for some reason. Razor was one that was always a little hard to come across um, for me back in the day. Y you had to just stumble into them. I never saw their stuff in record stores or new releases or anything. 
So yeah, I've heard most of the ones before it, heard several after it, but I just missed this one. So I was like, yeah, okay. Let's let's add it to the stack and uh, check it out. It's not bad. I get that, yeah, it's probably not on par with... It's, it's not on par with Evil Invaders before it. Um, I don't think it's as good as Violent uh, Restitution that came after it. But it's not a bad album either. It does have a weird drum production. The, the, the drums are maybe not that great, <laughs> and they're produced in kind of a way that makes it clear they're not that great sometimes. <laughs> so... Um, and that's one of the things, you know, when I started reading reviews, I'm just like, yep, everyone seems to have something to say about the drum sound on here. So I guess that did not help. If you can get past that, though, it, it's actually a pretty solid thrash album. It's yeah. what you would expect Razor to do. The, the, the chops are there. Sheepdog still sounds good. You know, the guitars are still crazy. Um so yeah, there's actually several very, very good songs on it. You just, you have to listen through the production a little bit. If you really get hung up on production issues with uh, drums in particular, yeah, this, this album's going to really kind of stick in your craw a bit. If that kind of thing doesn't drive you insane, uh, the sound is worth checking out. It, it's another one that I think is a bit better than a lot of the naysayers might have you believe it's not going to be top tier razor. As I said, they definitely did better albums back then, but um, it's worth checking out. It, it, it's, it doesn't need to be crapped upon for any reason other than having a poorly mixed or, you know, produced drum sound. Eh, eh, there are greater sins than that when it comes to making an album. So yeah, glad I checked it out. Uh, you know, it, it's a solid, seven and a half kind of record not gonna make that top tier but i'm glad i got it it's not one of those ones like ah oh, well sometimes you do this kind of thing you play it a few times you're like eh, i'm not getting those 20 dollars back but no this one i'm happy it's on the shelf it's a solid record um, i haven't spun in ages but it's good yeah yeah really like i said read. i think there's one more from that around there is it custom killing it is custom killing yeah custom killing now i think is the only one i haven't heard so i'll um uh, when it shows up for 20 bucks, I'll pick that one up, and then my run of uh, the Razor stuff will be pretty much complete. I haven't heard some of the, you know, like I didn't bother with their most recent album. That one did not get uh, good commentary from people I trust. Yeah. Nope. No, that's not no, a good no. record. I didn't no, think anyway. Not. Exactly. All right. <laughs> but, no, we... uh, all right, uh, Marty, I'll sit here and work on my nails with the saw blade <laughs> while uh, you tell us what else you're listening to. Well, I got a couple more of these worthless uh, O-ring cover things. Um, I got these for five bucks a piece. And Poland's Christ Agony on Holy Union. Oh, and, I like that band. Yeah, uh, yeah they're good. Damon Seth Act Two. Uh, these are reissues on Deform E-thing something or other. I don't know can't read the label my eyes aren't that great i remember hearing one or both of these when they came out back in the day and for some reason it just didn't click with me it's um, different yeah it's different and for some reason the one i had i thought it had a drum machine but I did, there's a drummer listed on both of these and there yeah. it might be a drum machine i don't know it's hard to say yeah. or what i'm sorry marty what's the second one you, you had damon seth act two and what's the other one uh unholy union art. unholy union Okay, yeah. The Act 3, it feels like it had a drum machine on it. Yeah, uh, that might have been Act 3 is what I heard then, but I was always underwhelmed by what I heard, and, you know, five bucks, I figured, screw it, I'll try it again, and you know what? These are pretty good records. I was kind of surprised. I listened to them a couple times. Um, black metal from a band, they are from Poland, I do believe. Am I wrong? Yeah, nope. they are. Yeah, they were, yeah, they were very early uh, black metal out of Poland before yeah, they the scene kind of went in a, you know, kind of NS direction for a long time. Oh, they yeah. did. Well, good. That's where I'm batting yeah. to this, this week, it seems like. Um, the Sacro yeah. Noctum seat demo came out in 1990, so they're really super early. Um, yeah, they were. They, they were actually one of the bands early, sorry, Marty, to interrupt, but uh, they were one of the bands that were very active early on with... Um, uh, Nurgle from Behemoth, mm -hmm. um, and when you know, like uh, you know, you know, Darken and some of you know his guys started giving other people crap on the polar scene. Christ Agony was one of the bands they singled out as you know not being 
of our true blood or whatever. Yeah. Um, so yeah, you know, Nurgle, of course, you know, kind of, you know, said, screw this. We're not dealing with that. And Christ agony was never into that vibe either, but yeah, so they, that's perhaps the thing they get noted for the most is one of the bands picked on by the, uh, early Polish NS scene. <laughs> Uh, spirit of death metal. Yeah. They're, they're in these silly freaking. Um, so it's, uh, unholy union and Damon Seth, D Damon's demon Seth act two. It's good. Melodic black metal. It does not sound like they're from Poland. I'll be honest. It doesn't have the, it doesn't have the, the stamp that was going on during that time. Like it doesn't have the underground. It's very well produced. It's polished. Uh, production values and you know there's a lot going on in the music with some synth work it's good it's good solid stuff five bucks a pop it was worth checking out so yeah i mean they have a pretty extensive catalog it, it's not one of those bands i'm like oh, okay i need to get all their stuff now because it i wasn't that blown away by it and they just did not uh agitate the collector itch you know to mm -hmm. complete a catalog but you know if i another one popped up for five bucks i'd check it out for sure 100 percent yeah. My understanding is uh, sometime after Act 3, they sort of change direction a little bit. They may have become like a one-man project at some point. There's just a picture of one guy in the in the Metal Archives uh, okay. picture. Yeah. So yeah, I, I lost track of them after the third one. But yeah, I, I always kind of liked their sound on those early ones. Yeah. But yeah. like you, I've, I've never felt the urge to go track down the rest of their catalog either. Yeah. It was a good exploratory mission, though. It's It mm -hmm. was worth, they're worth checking out. Yep. Yeah, they have some of their songs tend to be kind of long and trancey, which if you like that, it works well. If you don't, then it's not going to not going to fit. Yeah. Yeah, I think later on they started to get kind of a little bit more of an industrial vibe when it was just a solo project. I think it started oh, out okay. as a band, but became basically a one man project pretty quickly after like the first two records, I think. OK. So. All right. But yeah, good band. Bill, what you got? All right, here's a little. We're getting more on that kind of punk crust vibe. I've been because I've been doing that. This one, this Van Pillars here from Cincinnati, Ohio. This record's got a, a little cool bit of cover. a story. So I, I ordered this in November of 2022. I got this in December of 2023. Uh, oh, not in, geez. it took about a year. I mean, it's not the first time that's happened. The interesting story here with this band is, I guess, so they. They're independent. They're, you know, they, they are not on a label. They self-released this. And I guess that, you know, the pressing plant, probably Jeezy, I think, you know, it's because so much stuff is pressed to Jeezy. Yeah. We press guess, all of our shit there. Binder and yeah. Those. Yeah. Yeah. I guess for they, years. Yeah. Almost everybody does, yeah. you know, drop their, the plates for these and broke them, like <laughs> dropped them and broke the plates. So they oh, had geez. to basically start over again and, you know, so it took them forever to get get the stuff pressed. I mean, it, they sent. In fact, when they sent this record out, there was like a huge like a, a letter that was from the band that was like, so, the, "Thank you so much for be, bearing with us and being patient. We really appreciate it. You know, we're just a small DIY band." And they got like the color because I think that was the the that was the consolatory prize from the pressing plant. It was like, "Oh, we'll give you some color vinyl for free. We won't charge you anything extra for it." But this band's really, really good. They are, at times, they remind me a bit of His Hero Is Gone and Tragedy a little bit, if you're familiar with those bands at all. Very, they've got some very melodic elements, but there is kind of that sludgy, there's some of that sludgy vibe to, um, they're on tour right now. I know there's, I think they're playing here in Salt Lake, maybe next week. I'm, you know, I'm not going to go because I'm working and I'm tired and I'm old. I'd love to go, but it ain't happening. <laughs> Let's, be honest. Let's be honest, but really good. Uh, failed state. Um, like I said, just an awesome DIY kind of crusty hardcore record. So give these, give these guys a listen. Their heart's in the right place. Good deal. Bill, you should uh, like leave a note on their social media being like, yo, I'm, I'm looking forward to, you know, uh, hitting the venue. 13 months after you play there. <laughs> I'll, I'll, I'll show up in a year, you know, so <laughs> then you can have my money. No hard feelings <laughs> towards them at all. I mean, they were super, they were super nice. I think they sent out, an, I remember they sent out an email to all the band camp people and they were like, we'll give you a free shirt. And I was like, you don't need to bother giving me a free shirt. I get it. It's cool. Don't worry about it. You know, yeah. 
they're they're funding everything out of their own pocket. I'm like, you don't need to give me a shirt. I get it. So I was happy to get the record at all, honestly. <laughs> right. All right, Alan. All right. <clears throat> Here's one we really haven't talked about on this channel yet. Um, the New Jews Priest. This is mm. a thing that happened in Vincible Shield. <laughs> I still haven't got it. I'll get it eventually. I, oh, I, I, okay, I thought she had picked it up too, Marty. Sorry. Nope. But um, uh, yeah, obviously, you know, one of the you know, higher profile albums of the year. It's been out, you know, long enough now. Folks have digested it. Darcy's talked about it, you know, in depth over at uh, Darcy, Six Strings, Nine Lives. Um, it's good. Sounds good. You know, Rob still sounds, you know, quite good. Okay. You know, maybe not quite as strong as he was 40 years ago, but think about the sentence I just said. Um, good set of songs. If there's anything that's maybe missing here, it production feels really maybe a little too clean. Yeah, we, we all know some bands will do this. Uh, this one maybe needed just a little more oomph in the production. Didn't need to be quite this neat and tidy. Uh, I feel like that maybe is taking a little bit of the power out of it. Um, I like it. You know, I played it a bunch. I've set it aside. So kind of processing it. Don't know when it'll get back into rotation. Every It's very solid start to finish. I, it, you know, I almost though feel like they kind of rolled out the best few songs as some of the singles so that by the time you got the album, it's like, okay, we already know this song and this song. And then eh, these other songs are also good, but every else thing else maybe felt like maybe just a step back, which makes it slightly disappointing. Uh, you know, it, it's not a painkiller. It, it's not going full throttle, you know, speed metal or anything like that. It's not hanging out, you know, it's not a retro throwback, oh, let's try to redo, you know, our early 70s or mid 70s sound either. It's just kind of a good in the pocket Judas Priest album. I guess it ends up being more akin to early 80s Priest, it's certainly not late 80s Priest, certainly not 90s Priest. So, yeah, some, something in the neighborhood of, you know, the, the British Steel kind of uh, vibes. N nice album. Um, I'm not sure where it will end up ranking for me in Priest overall. Uh, they obviously have tons of good albums. There's a lot that you can reach for with a band like this. But yeah, this one, it's certainly a solid effort. I don't think there's a whole lot. If I'm, you know, nitpicking that, the, you know, the production's maybe a little too clean, that's also tell me there's not much to dislike about it but yeah I, I don't know if it's got those songs that are going to stand out as all-time classics it's hard to measure up to your own catalog when you're a band like judas priest but uh bill what did you think of it i mean i feel like it's okay like it starts strong i feel like the first three tracks are really good and then i feel like it kind of sags a bit in the middle and the end, I mean, I don't know. I guess I, I, I heard a lot of really good press for it, and I was maybe a little bit disappointed. I don't think I like it as much as Firepower. I think I Firepower was kind of like a pleasant, like I was like really surprised. I'm like, wow, this is actually really good, because I wasn't mm -hmm. really into Nostradamus. I wasn't really into Angel of Retribution, and so Firepower felt a whole lot more energized than those mm -hmm. records. And this one feels not like not quite as good as firepower so i mean a good record but not a great record not one that i'm probably going to play a whole lot honestly mm -hmm. you know it'll probably sit i don't know for me if i were to rank it you know i'd probably put it in the bottom third of their catalog not at the bottom by any means but you know it's not it's not sin after sin it's not stained class it's yeah, no killer, you know, none of that sort of stuff. But yeah, it's, it's not okay. going to push into the top tier. Yeah. But yeah, no, I think I think you're right. It, it it doesn't have quite as much you know of a, a gut punch as Firepower did. Firepower might have a few more ups and downs. This one might be more consistent, but yeah, yeah it, it doesn't have the 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 highlights that maybe that Firepower did. Firepower, if you pulled two or three songs off of it, would have been a really really. Uh, highly ranked album is a little too long. You know, there's a couple of filler songs on it. This yeah. one feels more even, but it lacks the, yeah, it, you don't have those big high moments. I, I agree with you. All right. Um, oh, well, I've got a soft spot in my heart for 
the industrial metal stuff. I mean, we just did a thing on pitch shifter. Big fan of pitch shifter. I got something that's <laughs> kind of in that vein coming up in the vinyl when I get to the vinyl stuff. But uh, I think I never heard of this band. And I saw, I think it was Dennis from Analog Archive showing it. And I checked it out when he was showing it. I'm like, oh, this is kind of up my alley. And it came out in 1994. It's the debut album by Puncture. It's on Century Media Records. And <laughs> it's just, it, if 90s had a sound, you know, it'd be like Rob Zombie, Pantera, and this style. Mm. You look mm. it up on the Metal Archives, it says Industrial Groove Metal, which normally I'd listen to that and be like, ah, uh, groove. You put yeah. groove in there. I typically, I like things that gro- have a groove to them, but if it's, classified as groove it typically it's 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 in a style i'm probably not going to dig but i don't know been spinning this in the car it's really well produced drum machine driven uh metal with uh rough ish vocals um if you like bands like screw um well screw (laughs) i mean screw sounded like ministry but this isn't necessarily ministry it's a little bit more on the heavy side anybody remember that band uh womb uh, they put they put out a, a five song or six song EP called uh, no wait bleed bleed is the name of the band they're from Wisconsin they turned into Ephotic but their bleed the name of the EP was womb it was like death metal with a drum machine and industrial I love that shit I love it it's so good I get vibes of that here but it's way better produced and being on Century Media it's not necessarily an underground sound it has more of a slick. Uh, approach to the whole metal thing i still dig it though i don't know it's been one i got it cheap on ebay and um it finally came the other day i've been spinning it i I enjoy it it's one of those things i'll listen to a lot for a couple weeks and it'll hit the rack and until i get in the vibe again for this style it'll sit probably a long time but they put out two albums and um some demo stuff i guess they're still together they haven't put out anything since 1996 so other than a single this year so not a productive project but you know here yeah that bleed check out bleed um really good death metals they turned into they changed the name from bleed to crawl and then um they went from crawl to aphotic which is more testify um i you know what eric i we did get some testify promos back in the worm gear days yeah van van richter he used to send us promos and some of it was good some of it wasn't so good and i i remember getting testify cds i think i sent them to my co-editor scott at the time he was handling all that stuff so it had come across my table i don't think i listened listened very intently though anyway puncture it if you're into that type of stuff it's pretty cool very 90s uh bill you're back yeah seem to remember hearing of that puncture band because i i was really into a lot of that stuff i used to listen to troponin pal if you remember oh them. i dig i dig them yeah, I, yeah I just, Pal's really good they're and really good really chem weird lab chem lab was another one they were like yep. a european kind of like industrial metal kind of thing but yeah i remember seeing the name puncture but i don't think i ever heard it so yep all right let's see what else do we pull from the magical stack here there's so many so many little deals. Ah, we'll do this. This is a recent one. So I'm a pretty big, like, like we'll keep it with the black metal here. This is another Spark, Svata Daudi's project, project here. Beketh, Nexamu, Mystic, all that stuff. This is Secrets. Um, you know, just continuing his style of really, you know, catchy, evil, Scandinavian black metal. This is an Amor Fati release. Um, and he's got a million different things. Guard Gaster, that was something he did a few years ago that was on Profound Lore. And it's it's all quality. I mean, I don't know. If you like, it's kind of like if you like one of his bands, you're kind of gonna like all of his bands. So um, you know, I I don't know. It's I don't know if there's anything like that's specifically that stands out from any of the other stuff that he does, but I think he's just he's got a formula that that works, at least for me. I really, really like it, you know, catchy riffs and just, you know, blasting drums and pained evil vocals. So this is a pretty recent pickup here, but Mm -hmm. yeah, I like it. Secrets on Amor Fati. All right. 
Alan. Okay. <clears throat> uh, over the past few months, I had a bunch of very cheap Paradise Lost CDs turn up uh, in a couple of places. And you know, there were some big gaps in their catalog I had never checked out. Um, so I so say, okay, yeah, I'll pay $4 for that and $3 for that kind of things. Uh, one of them that ended up uh, showing up pretty cheap was the most recent Obsidian. Um, and this is a really good album. F folks had been telling me I needed to check this one out. So lots of folks in the chat and comments had said, yeah, that's a, that's a great album. And so I was like, okay, I will listen to it. It is just a matter of, you know, having it finally come across my path, which it did. And yeah, really impressed with this. Uh, it sounds great. There's a really good diversity of, you know, songs and styles on here. Uh, I didn't pull it, but I also got Medusa from the same person. Um, Medusa was really good too. Medusa very much feels like more of a doom record you know it's you know slower songs uh, a lot heavier kind of tone overall there's still some of that on obsidian but they mix it up a lot more um so yeah i was really happy to come across this most folks have heard it again i'm very late to this i didn't avoid paradise lost for any reason i just stopped coming across their stuff after let's see one Second came out. I actually liked One Second. I know that was a sort of divisive album. After that, you know, the albums kept getting worse and worse reviews, and I wasn't picking up as many new releases by the time albums like Host and Believe in Nothing came out. So that's kind of where I had lost track of the band. So a lot of catching up to do. But, uh, yeah, these two most recent ones, Medusa and Obsidian, very, very impressed with these. So I, I definitely intend to keep working my way backwards and seeing what else they've been up to. Uh, dig it a lot. Not much else to say there on that one. All right. Uh, again, I went down yeah. to Vertigo Records a couple weeks ago with my kid, and it's always fun to dig through the used stuff there. Um, this one popped up. I have one other album by, I don't know, Yen Dode, their Norwegian black metal band. Uh, Steiger Fra Dodds Ricket. I've got that. Yeah, I've got that album. It's it's a demo compilation, uh, mm -hmm. and um, demos are good. Uh, they have a unique flair to some of the tracks um, that makes them stand out a bit. They don't necessarily sound 100 percent Norwegian. They just have a weird uh, characteristic that doesn't really come across a lot of these bands. And it's cool to hear it in the demo stuff. Um, the one I don't, I have the one album I have, it's one of the guys walking with blood running down his arm in the woods. I don't know yeah, the name. Not wearing a shirt. Yeah. Not a shirt. Yeah. I've got that same one. I've got it over here somewhere, but yeah. I can't remember the title either. I yeah. can't remember the last time I listened to it either, but you know, yeah. six bucks. I'll check this out. That's fine. It's uh 13 tracks on hell thrasher productions. And, you know, for a bunch of demos, the production's good, raw, the way you kind of want it, but clear. And for a two piece, these guys, they got some cool ideas. I dig it. It's kind of makes me want to check out some of their other stuff. So mission accomplished on the demo thing for sure. Yeah. Bill. So I've got a serious obsession I've always had with kind of the melodic Swedish death metal of the nineties. I like, it's like, I, kind of listen to every c grade band i mean i've got all the gates of ishtar stuff um you know i really like the first or some of the early uh um what's the band uh a blaze my sorrow those albums like their first album in particular you know if emotions still burn so it was weird that i'd never really checked out this band before and i picked this up recently a cannabis quintet so oh, this good band. Is, yeah yeah, and I, I I think it's I had not picked it up before because the I, the name the t you know the band name to me was a bit just a bit obtuse where I'm like hmm, the Cantorous Quintet I I don't you know I was like how good is that gonna be that's kind of a kind of a ponderous name you know so this is the crypt reissue of their EP as Tears and it has their demo on it as well the Time of Autumn and it's oh, really good really good stuff so I mean. Just, you know, again, it kind of fits in the pocket of that that kind of mid to late 90s melodic Swedish death metal. But now I want to pick up 
their two albums, you know, that are on CD. I think that I think the Crypt did re release their first album, but I have a burn of their first album and it's really good. And every time yeah. I try to get an original of it, it's nah, I can't afford that. <laughs> I, it's like it's like fifty to seventy dollars yeah. on CD. Even and the the Crypt reissue of it's just as much, if not yeah. more. So, but yeah, this band was like, I was like, wow, why have I not? Um, listen to this band for and this guy's hair is freaking amazing if you can see here like <laughs> wow. i mean it's incredible it's like freaking gorgeous insanely long I wonder how many times he's crapped on his hair in like oh, a yeah. rush to get oh. in the bath <laughs> he probably <laughs> accidentally wiped his ass with his hair he's sitting the there time. taking a massive deuce and he in the toilet doesn't know his hair's in it the whole time like, oh yeah. no <laughs> like, not again god satan damn god damn it why yeah <laughs> Yeah, exactly. But I guess that's the price you pay for such luxurious love. At least it looks cool in the pictures. It's <laughs> worth it. <laughs> it's like he's the envy of all the other dudes in the band with his right. amazing, like, lion's mane of red hair. So, yeah. But a cannabis quintet. I'm I'm late to the party, but I'm I'm glad that I finally heard him because it's great. Great stuff. Right on. Hmm. All right. Hey, Ben, what's up? Hmm. Ellen. You guys really got a real hair up your ass over that one, didn't you? <laughs> like Warl Dane, you look at those pictures, you know, getting back to Wednesday's uh, yep. the same thing. Oh, I grabbed yeah. on my hair again. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Shit hair metal. <laughs> <laughs> That's a, a new subgenre. We're doing a deep dive into shit hair metal. Yeah. <laughs> Bands with to... dudes that may have crapped on their hair at least once <laughs> yeah. in their life. <laughs> yeah, in the late we have to fall into that too, because because Ross's hair is super long and you know that's oh. in there too. Yeah. I've heard of having your head up your ass, but this is taking it to a new exactly. level. Exactly. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> okay, let's see. What else we got here? Getting a little close to the end of the stack. Um okay. Um uh, had not played this in mm, ages and ages. Great record. Um, but uh, yeah, got, again, another kind of cheap CD showed up. So I've got, uh, and I've had all their stuff on digital forever, but I only had two of them on hard copy. So now I've got three, Manic Impressions. It was interesting revisiting this album. The songs that always stood out on this one to me were, you know, Paint a Picture and Love the World, which is the cover song. New Model Army. Yeah. But yeah. um yeah, you know, you know, revisiting it, you know, been making it a point, you know, to listen, kind of skip past those two songs so that I could get into more of the, you know, other tracks better. Yeah, I had forgotten, you know, just how cold this album is overall. Yeah. It, it's got, you know, that very, very kind of sterile, clinical kind of, uh, you know, tech metal production about it, which in a way is a little at odds with Kevin Nardi's voice for me because you know, his voice never really feels that way to me he's you know you know as we've discussed on other releases by him you know he's got you know all kinds of you know great sounds you know that come out of him but yeah i never think of him as one of those like you know cold clinical distant kind of voices whatsoever if anything i usually think of him as yeah like a little more you know emotional warm tortured kind of vocalist all in a good way um so yeah you know but yeah the music on this one yeah it's really got that you know turn of the decade 80s 90s you know clinical production to it which suits a lot of the material fine um i'm glad they didn't stay in that particular vein i think one album in that vein is interesting i think if they had stuck with that sound for the follow-up album i think it might have gotten tedious and it's worth pointing out because there's some demos on here for this uh, issue of a couple of songs that were on screams and whispers but they're done in the exact same style as Manic Impressions. So there's, there's a version of uh, Tools of Separation on here, which is you know, a great song on uh, Screams. But, but here it's done with the exact same you know, production outlook that they use for the tracks on this. And we're looking through the liner notes. Uh, apparently, you know, it's kind of insinuated that, yeah, I was very much thinking about, you know, this was, you know, going to be kind of their sound until at some point they were like, you know what, what if we took these new songs and just really went a completely different way with them, which is what they did. And they ended up uh, making a magnificent follow-up album. So yeah, glad, glad they kind of decided to veer out of this lane after one album. 
but yeah, it, it's a good listen, but you, you have to be in the mood for that particular style and sound. If you're not, it's a very hard listen. But yeah, a cool band was nice to get a hard copy of that. Nice to revisit it. It's one of those things that's been on my hard drive forever. I don't even remember. I, for At one point, they had put a lot of stuff on their old website just for free. Everything. They put everything up for free, yeah. Yeah. All the people, demos. There were, yeah, there were demos. There was some live stuff, I think. Um, and yeah, you know, so I'd gotten all the stuff from them at the time and just hadn't revisited a lot of it in ages. So um, yeah, I've got a much better sort of up, updated uh, handle on manic impressions, kind of brushed the, the rust off of that part of my brain. Uh, very cool band. If anyone's never checked them out, uh, they were definitely one of those sort of unsung bands that always did quality stuff. Thrash metal, but in a very unique, uh, u- their own unique take on the style. And that was always a problem. The bands like that did that, they always had a, a hard road. Even though they toured, they got on some big tours. Mm-hmm. People either love it or they don't get it. You know, it's it, kind of the way it goes. Yeah, you know? very, very much a band that, yeah, it, it would be easy for a lot of folks just to not get it, especially back then. <laughs> oh, yeah. Yeah. I mean, they were also, they were from St. Louis, too, which, yep. like, Missouri, I mean, I, I went to college in Missouri and lived there for years. Like, believe me, there's not, St. Louis was not known for having some amazing metal scene or any scene really at all. So mm-hmm. that didn't help them either. It's like they were from the middle of the country and from a city that was not known for having really much in the way of metal or, or music at all. You know, yeah. Yeah. that's a good, that's a really good point, Bill. Yeah. They were in those bands kind of lost in middle America. Flyover state. Yep. Mm -hmm. all right well still kind of uh on the the ics vortex kick and um i haven't spun this a while and last week i dug it out and it lamented souls the origins of misery this is uh ics basically uh, two dudes that are in this are in the new coffin storm um fenris band i did a review of it here it sounds like dark throne but a little bit better actually um yeah. They're in this band, and then you got ICS Vortex or Seaman Hestus Hestness on uh, vocals and bass. And this is a Norwegian take on Candlemass with a little bit of a slight stoner element, but not really. Um, I hear a lot of Candlemass on here. Then, you know, Vortex is really weird, clean vocal style. It just it suits it really well. His vocals really sit well in this style. And he's a good bass player too. He's a um, excellent musician all the way around. But Duplicate Records number two thirty four out of five hundred is my copy. It's a great record. It's uh, basically a collection of their demos. I don't know if they ever put out a proper full length, but this is really good. Check it out. You guys heard that? I have not. It looks familiar, but I don't think I have. Good stuff. Hmm. Sounds interesting. Yeah, I'll, I'll have to check it out. Yeah, I'm not familiar with it. All right, Bill. All right, we got two. Speaking of kind of weird thrash here, these were recent reissues, end of last year, and I decided to pick up going on that Christian thrash vein. Believer, the the first two Believer records here. So, oh, um, this, we got Extraction from Mortality. So good. Yeah, this album. Love in the cover too. Yeah. Yeah, Extraction from Mortality. Really, really good. Kind of somewhat technical leaning thrash. The only song I'm not a big fan of, the last song. Uh, Stephen Thrash, Hawking's. Which is, oh, yeah. Yeah, which is kind of, it's kind of a product of its time where it gets kind of funky, you know, and it's kind of mm-hmm. kind of tapping into some of the funk metal vibes there, you know. 1989, though, I mean, that was happening everywhere. Yeah. But, you know, so I mean, it's not a terrible song or anything. It just it stands out as being kind of the odd odd yeah. one out on this record. But you know, it's it is a great it is a great album. And then the follow up one, which is even which is way more progressive, even dimensions, but still still I would Good. say a solid thrash record. You know, the vocals are still pretty harsh and ripping. You know, but it's obviously just a whole lot more complexity to like the bass playing and the riffs mm-hmm. are a lot more angular and, and, you know, and, and intellectual, you could almost say, you know, there's like, there's some serious music theory going on in there, you know, isn't that the third only, album? 
it's, that's the third album, isn't it? Is it that the is, third album? Yeah, I think this is the third yeah, album. Yeah, I think Sanity Obscure is the second album. Ah, okay, that's the one. Yeah, I wasn't sure which one was which. Oh, that's there. good. Good one too. That, but that one's their proggiest of the first three. <laughs> yeah, this one's sure. super prog. Like the jump from this to this is, you know, is pretty, pretty severe. But yeah, like this was a band I'd heard about for years, and I, and I had never really bothered to check out, you know, especially when I was younger, because I was like, oh, it's Christian stuff, it's got to be garbage, you yeah. know. And now I'm old and I don't give a shit. I'm like, whatever, it doesn't matter. And it is, it's good stuff. So, yeah, I was glad to get these, uh, especially the, the extraction for mortality. So good stuff. Yeah, been enjoying it a lot. Yeah, a, a cool band, definitely ahead of a lot of their peers in the uh, Christian scene. What's weird is one of the guys, I think he, the, maybe he was the bassist, he went on to be or was simultaneously in Earth Crisis, I guess, at one point I was reading. Oh. What a go. weird, yeah. It was a late, I think he was a later bass player and it might have been the guy, he might have been on like that third record, but yeah, it was weird. There was an Earth Crisis tie to Believer, but yeah, hmm. it's a thing. It's a thing. Yeah, good point, Ben. I noticed Thrash nowadays doesn't really go out of its comfort zone much compared to back then. It seems like yeah, modern day true. thrash bands coming out are trying to emulate the heyday, and they're not really straying from it, you know. Unless mm-hmm. you're a band like Vector or you know, or writing yeah. crazy techie stuff that's really catchy and memorable, but not a lot of bands are doing the something only, super unique. Yeah, the only newer thrash band I've heard that sort of goes a little bit a little bit outside the box that's Sadistic Ritual. Yeah. Oh, that yeah, band, yeah, yeah. Sort of, that band's pretty good. They don't go too far out, but it's it doesn't feel like they're just trying to totally mimic mm-hmm. 80s thrash like so many other bands do. Yeah, yeah. great call, you know? Bill. But uh, yeah. yeah, you're right, Marty. It very much feels like a genre that kind of has painted itself into a corner. And, and some bands still do it really well, especially oh, yeah. some of like the Chilean bands that, you know, Kellen, uh, you know, espouses on yeah. uh, like critical, critical defiance. Time. But, um, but even there, I mean, yes, I mean, it's very much, you know, homage to classic thrash. They just do it extremely well. Whereas some bands uh, do it kind of pain by numbers. Right. Mm-hmm. Okay. Alan. All right. <clears throat> Got this a while back. Hadn't heard it in ages. People don't seem to like this band, and I'm not sure why. Maybe folks can set, shed some light on this. It's uh, Carpathian Forests, Black Shining Leather. I love that record. I love that record, too. I think it's awesome. It's great. I also think it's great. This is a later edition. The original had like a black kind of textured cover. Yeah. So this is some kind of reissue of it. But um, yeah, I always thought it was kind of an interesting one. I mean, I've heard some of the, I haven't heard all their stuff, but I've heard a few other albums and they always seem kind of to have their own thing going on. You know, they, some of the albums definitely had, you know, a much more prominent kind of, you know, punky vibe motorhead. Mixed into the black metal. Yeah. yeah. Went a little more motorhead. Um, yeah, they, they tended to have more of the, uh, the, the, the BDSM kind of, you know, innuendo mixed into the lyrics and, you know, the sound effects and such, which, on one hand, it's cheesy, but it also felt like it fit with the black metal nihilistic ethos. I was always a little surprised other bands didn't pick up on that. Um, not a lot of them did necessarily. So, you know, they've got this one's got, you know, the uh, really good cover of A Forest from The Cure. That's on a it. really good cover. It is. Yeah, it is. Nurgle yeah. should have took some notes from that fucking cover because <laughs> but, it's his cover yep. sucks. Okay. Yeah, and I, if Marty tells you it's a good cover song, that's saying something right yeah. there. It's a good. Yeah. They did. They held true to the original very yeah. well. So um, yeah, I don't know if any of their other albums really stayed in this vein. Like I said, you know, some of them after this start getting you know having much more of that prominent you know Motorhead punky sound. The the stuff I've heard of, I always thought was pretty decent. But man, you start looking at reviews on these guys, and everybody just seems to absolutely want to you know put their hair in the toilet and crap on it, so to speak. <laughs> <laughs> Um, well, that after that album, the there's like Nordovin and um, Natafrost, and yeah. Nordovin was the more atmospheric, traditional black metal guy. When he mm-hmm. left, um, Natafrost took over, and it got a lot more punky, a lot more Motorhead. Mm-hmm. The album after Strange Old Brew, it's a great record, but it's very punky. You know? Yeah, yeah. Did the members like piss off the scene somehow? No that idea. Got them in the crapper with so many folks. 
it may just be one of those random things where they just didn't connect with folks. But yeah, I'm, I'm surprised it's a band that um, you, you don't hear them mentioned very often at all. And the few times, you know, you look at like Metal Archives, not good reviews on those albums. You, you poke around other places and people seem very dismissive of Carpathian Forest. I don't get it. I even like their older stuff, like, you know, some of the, the more demo-ish stuff they did. What was it, like Chasm Caves and... Titan Woods. Titan, Through Titan Chasm Woods. Caves yeah, Titan and Titan Woods, Woods. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah, I think I've got one that's a, a collection of demos. I thought it was like an NWN thing or something. Uh, Carpath, Bulgarian, Carpath, yeah screw it what's the title of it it's got a but you know like the demos and stuff were pretty good too what is the name of that demo collection chat help me out here if you can i will type it into the mothership wait for them to identify me as human because that's the thing that's still happening. well that's so annoying they gotta fix that <laughs> shit yeah i don't know what what has happened there but it's weird yeah bloodlust and perversion that's the uh mm. it's yeah like a collection of early recordings and it's really good so yeah, I I don't know what the deal is with uh, Carpathian Forest, but anyway, um, as far as the metal archives things go, poking around online, some folks said they were experiencing one of those uh, DDoS style attacks, so that they were using this was this basically fends off all of the bots and keeps the bots from clogging up the system, so that. Uh. The real people can get onto the site. It just takes like two seconds longer oh, for yeah. you to get on the site while a bunch of jerks apparently have a you know million bots trying to uh, clog up the server so that nobody can use the site because they're pissed off at something the administrators did at Metal Archives. Yeah, um, I, I never found anything that really said the details of why they were getting attacked, uh, just that that's why it is. The admins are like, yep, sorry, we put that up and it's staying there for the time being. So that you can enjoy the site and we can laugh at a bunch of idiots wasting their time trying to clog us up when it's not going to work. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So yeah, in, in that context, I I, I can I wait two agree. extra seconds for them yeah. to verify I'm human. <laughs> yep, absolutely. But okay, I'm glad to know I'm not the only person that likes Corpathian Oh, I I spun the show <laughs> that record when it came out. I liked yeah. it a lot. It's good. No, I think most of their stuff's good. I do. Good deal, good deal. How, how are folks doing on a stack? I'm asking in case I need to go grab a few more titles, or are we getting close to the end? Mario, I know you've got a long car ride in the yeah, morning. I'm getting close to the end. So I got no. two more this round and one more after it. Bill, what have you got? Yeah, I've got like I've got like three more. So three. All right, let me go grab just one or two more then, and I'll be in good shape. Okay. All right. Well, I was surprised. I went to go get my kid at the local record store a Sabaton record for his birthday, and Went through the new arrivals and surprised to see this sitting in there. Horoscope by Overkill. It's one of my favorite Overkill albums. Probably the third favorite of their catalog. Um, this is a reissue. 2021 reissue. And it was used. 22 bucks. And for this, my local shop to have something like this for 22 bucks, you buy it. Because they're so overpriced there. It does have a... A seam split, which sucks, but it's not a deal breaker. Um, great record. For reproduction and a reissue, they did a good job on the cover. It's not all pixelated and crappy. It looks like they actually had the original source and redid it. They did a good job on it. Um, my God, thanks for nothing. Horoscope. New machine. Live young, die free. <laughs> nice day for a funeral. Great, great, great album. Love this album. Um the one after years of after this album, they put out that awful uh, "I Hear Black," so it's oh, amazing. Yeah. It's amazing. It's an amazing swing how they go from such high quality to the only time they really I found Overkill trying to follow a trend would be that "I Hear Black." I bought that record to fill in the collection, and I was shocked at how much Alice in Chains I heard in it. I mean, it still sounded like Overkill, but you could tell they were aiming for the what was going on at the time a little bit. They stopped doing that after that record, but, um, and some people say they like, I hear black cool. Not for me. I do not like that record, but it's amazing how that record came out after this <clears throat> grand opus here. But, um, yeah, I was totally psyched to see this turn up in the used store 22 bucks. I'm going to buy it. I don't have, I'm not going to be the guy that has to go buy all the overkill records on vinyl too, but, um, I do want feel the fire. I got their first 
four song EP and I have under the influence and a single and I need to get taking over and feel the fire and then I'll be happy and maybe the years of decay but yep I like to see it you see it you buy it <laughs> that that is a yeah. great album that nobody talks about I know it's a bummer because it is a great record yeah yeah it slips through the cracks a lot it, yeah it really does I feel like maybe part of the problem is it's their last really great album album they, they have some great ones after that but it, yeah. you start getting very hit or miss for a while after that yeah i mean yeah agreed i'm not going to disagree with that there's some people ask when we're going to do the overkill dive it, it will happen it'll it, happen it, eventually it's been discussed we already know who we're doing it with yep. it's just uh i've got yeah. all their shit except for the new one i don't have the new one yet but i'll get it yeah. eventually yeah, we've, we've done a couple of discographies lately, and we actually have two discographies already lined up within the next month. So over, Overkill is going to have to kind of probably wait until the summer before we have time to work our way through all that. But yep. it, it will happen. All right. What you got, Bill? All right. Let's see. So many options here. Here's one that because this was because something that you had recommended, Marty, and I picked it up. I picked up a couple of their records, and this one I like, I think, better than the other one. So I'll show that. The new Valdrin. That's actually. a good record. It is. It's really good. I think I bought the second one as well from cause the, from the Blood Harvest store. I have not heard that one. All I've heard is that one. This this one I liked a lot better. There's a this is a lot more, I would say, fully formed. The mm. the melodicism, everything going on in this, the songwriting has improved a lot from record number two to this. Um, that that uh, the other record was kind of a little bit more stock kind of black death metal hybrid not nearly as memorable you know this yeah i was really really happy with this it's, it's there's again like there's a lot of hooks in this and being that's a double lp it never gets boring either like the fact that it's you know it's pretty long actually but it's it holds up really well i was trying to see this the songs that i think really stood out i really liked the hierophant and i think throne of the lunar soul and him to the convergence were songs on this that were really good. And the artwork is is super cool on all of their records. I've noticed it's all the same artist, and is it's all like one long story, isn't it? From what I can from what I can tell, it's like they're creating yeah. kind of their own. They made, of, it's all all four of their records are all in that world, and they're like continuations of each other, which is yeah. kind of cool. Yeah, yeah, it is cool. Like it's a whole fantasy mythos that they're creating and stuff like that. So, yeah, I would definitely say start with this one and you know i gotta hear the third one i you know and see if what that's a bridge between the second and fourth here and see if you know how much of a jump in that that songwriting it is but it is like i said it is basically black death metal but this brings in you know like a whole lot of keyboards and more melodic elements we can hear stuff like dissection and you know early demu borgir and stuff in there as well and it's really good so a great recommendation there. Right on. Oh, sorry, Rena. Ch- okay, Alan, you're up. Yeah, just uh, yeah, chatting, chatting overkill releases with uh, uh with folks. Uh, I'm looking forward to doing the overkill catalog because there's a ton of theirs I just am not familiar with, and I really love a lot of the early ones. I just I lost touch with them around the end of the '90s, so a lot of catching up to do. All right, let's see. This one, the CD case seems slightly messed up. Hold on a second. Technical difficulties. Why is that not closing all the way? Yeah, I'll fix it later. If you had an O-ring it, card around it, it'd be better. It would hold it all together for you. <laughs> it, it's not flopping open, but for, it's looking at the case is not quite... Uh, I have a feeling like the <clears throat> the tray inserts uh, popped out or something. Anyway, um... Finally got around to getting this, this fix, Necroceros. I am really enjoying these more recent as fix albums. I had never, another band I just you know, I hadn't kept up with, but um, I picked up Death Hammer a few months ago. I was pleasantly surprised at how good that one was. Picked up this one on kind of a similar lark, and uh, man, this is a really good album. Uh, everyone sounds very good on it. Um uh, tracks uh, you know i like the fact with this one and death hammer they do a very good job of balancing 
you know, their death metal leanings and their like death doom leanings. That you know that you have you know some faster songs that are very aggressive, but don't you know devolve into just random blasting. And you've got you know those slower doomy songs, but they don't devolve into the point of just dragging along and having no oomph to them whatsoever. They're really good at straddling that line and performing well in both of those particular lanes. It doesn't seem to be anything different uh, from what they've done on recent albums. You know, people seem to compare this one like, yeah, it's it's what they've been doing for the past few albums since Van Drunen came back into the fold. But um, I'm I'm okay with that. <laughs> I think they do it extremely well, and as such, I'm going to keep working my way backwards through the catalog for a while and uh, check out some more. It's just one of those again. S fix rarely seems to show up locally. You, you don't see even when there's a new release. It really just isn't on the shelves locally, and it's not something I ever really stop and think about ordering as soon as it comes out. But uh. After a couple of years, people seem to get tired of them and they sell them back to the store. And, uh, yep, that's Alan's time to shine. <laughs> <laughs> so I'm always a step or two behind on uh, S-Fix. But, uh, yeah, I really have been enjoying this band's more recent stuff. Uh, everyone, of course, you know, wants to talk about, you know, the rack and the early ones. Sure, great, classics. We know them and love them. But it's really nice to pick up things they've done in recent years and realize that, holy shit, th these are actually really good. They're not just, you know, killing time or taking up space. These are albums I will like, I, I foresee myself playing, you know, these albums on, you know, a semi-regular basis in the future. What do y'all think of recent S fix? Am I just uh, overly exuberant on them or do they actually hold up pretty good? I haven't heard, I haven't heard Necros. I haven't heard the last two actually. Yeah, no, I like, I've got the Necroceros, I guess that's how you pronounce it, but yeah, it's good, and I have Death Hammer as well, I don't think there's, I think there's an album in between them, I think it's called Incoming Death or something yeah, like that. Yeah, okay. yeah, that one I haven't heard, but I do like the one, I think that was the Van Drun and Comeback, Death the Brutal, Death the Brutal Way, that's really good, yeah. That album is really yeah. good, Marty, and that still has that some of the, good, yep. that one I think still had some of the other original members, like I think Bob Bagchis was still in the band, yep. And, yep. Yeah. Now I think the old, I mean, I, you know, well, Van Drunen it technically isn't an original member because they had a different vocalist. They had Theo Lumens. Yeah. Theo yeah. Lumens, yep, who was really true. good. That Embrace the Death record is excellent with him. But yeah, but I mean, yeah, the, the stuff with just Van Drunen and a bunch of newer people is, is actually good from what I've, what I've heard. I, I like it. Yeah. All right. Yep. Seems, uh, <clears throat> seems all solid. Yeah, and yeah, I, I'm not sure on the pronunciation either. Uh, I, I love the idea that it is supposed to be Necroceros because it sounds like a big dead zombie rhinoceros. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. I, I really want it to be pronounced that way. I, listening to it, it sounds like he says the word both ways at different points in songs. Yeah. Like sometimes they say Necroceros, but there's another point where it sounds like he says Necroceros. I, I, I just want a big like rotting fetid zombie i mean this is the band that did the magma mammoth song so you know a yeah. zombie rhinoceros is not out of the question, not out of the question. That, that could oh, be part yeah. of their playbook for sure <laughs> yeah all right well my last one i've been listening to both of these records a lot lately i rekindled my ipod i plugged it in it still works i charged it up and i've been spinning these they're on my ipod so i go to bed listening to this stuff Depressor from California. This is Filth Grace. Mm -hmm. This is um, self-titled, full length. This is great. Of the pitch shifter, or the early pitch shifter vibe, Godflesh if you want, but these guys are definitely more pitch shifter leaning. It's just so primitive, especially this Filth and Grace. It's kind of like demo sounding, but um, it's just really heavy. The vocals are great dark it's got a crusty vibe to it um they got a little bit better production on this one here but it's all drum machine driven plotting drum machine heavy bass presence on this um i mean listen to the industrial from pitch shifter and submit that they've kind of following along in those footsteps on both of these on uh both of these outings here they have a record out after this too it looks like a uh a parody of um dimension Hatros art style but the they have like a drummer and they change their they have like more of a hardcore style i didn't care for that one much but 
these two, when they were still doing the industrial metal stuff, it's just plotting and um, cold and lo-fi and just really solid, well-written stuff. I mean, even, you know, the zooming in of a hair or whatever the hell this thing is. I mean, it looks it looks like a pitch shifter record. You know what I mean? Same mm -hmm. thing here. <laughs> oh, yeah. You know they're totally they're totally aping the 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 art aesthetic and the sound too, but it works for me. It works for me. This stuff is really really solid. I wish they would have kind of continued on with it, but they didn't. And um, my friend Scott, who started Bind Rune with me way back in the day, and we did Worm Gear Zine together, he was friends with one of the guys in this band, and I think he told me he was like he worked for Metallica. He was like Kirk's guitar tech, or worked with Kurt, or something. I don't know. I'm not going to talk out my ass, but I'll, I'll just say he worked for Metallica. I don't know to what means or ends or all any of that shit, but it's kind of funny. A guy that's putting out this, you know, stripped down, cool, industrialized, you know, crusty type of metal is working for Metallica. But <laughs> hey, got to pay the bills, right? <laughs> yeah, indeed. All so right. are we starting our last round then? Mike? I'm done. I'm done, actually. So go ahead. Oh, you okay. guys do what you got to do. Okay, I'll just show. Let's see, I got I got two more here. We'll show. So we'll go with. We're gonna do some. Uh, there's like there's a lot of metallic hardcore stuff here. So that's what the two two things here. Because one of these is a classic band, and the other one is a band that I'd never really given a shot. And then I got this reissue and really liked it. As I've gotten older, like when I was younger, I never really liked a lot of the tough guy hardcore kind of stuff. I was never a fan of it, you know. I was always way more into the 80s stuff or like um, stuff like, or I, you know, I still love like stuff like from the 90s, like Rorschach and Born Against and stuff. But this is a band, more of the New York hardcore thing. Marauder, Master Killer. Like this. Everybody record, says that's like the, the, the end boss of the New York sound. It, it, this is, yeah, this is a very metallic kind of New York hardcore, like very stompy, tough guy record. But man, it's it's really good. You know, it's kind of kind of in the vein of stuff like Madball, but but and Sheer Terror, but more metallic leaning than really even either of those bands. Actually, you know, it's it's kind of very knuckle dragging and like kick you in the face, knock your teeth out kind of vibe. You know, mm -hmm. obviously stuff about martial. You know, there's stuff from martial arts. There's a lot of martial arts references and stuff there. But yeah, it's really good. Like I said, it's the kind of thing in the '90s. I gave a wide berth because i always thought oh this is total meathead shit but now i've opened up to that and i'm like yeah it's it's really really good actually so that's a reissue i think from last year that but yeah master killer good stuff right on alan all right <clears throat> revisited this one because uh i got it actually i think i got it last october when bill was uh on the show and i was on vacation come to think <laughs> of it you know, it's an album I had overlooked for a long time. Played it some back in October, November. So I was like, yeah, maybe I just wasn't quite in the mood for it. Maybe I didn't spend enough time with it. But it's like, I need to circle back to that one. So um, I gave Blood, Fire, Death by Bathory some more time. And, and, and really like, you know, sitting down, paying very close attention to it. Because a lot of people rave about this album. It's one of my favorite Bathory records, yeah. Lots of folks rank it very highly, yes. And it wasn't that I ranked it low. It was just like, it was the album I didn't really know very well by them. Um, for the life of me, I cannot remember if I owned this at some point back in the 90s or if I just heard it and somebody else had a copy of it. If I owned it, I didn't have it for long. Maybe it was like on a b-side of a tdk tape or something i don't know regardless you know people talk it up a lot and it was a kind of a glaring gap right there in the you know middle of classic bathoryville that i didn't know so yeah i picked it up and like i said just wasn't clicking with me last fall but came back to it i'm start i'm starting to get it now i see what's going on here and i also see why it kind of confused me and threw me off six months ago um, the thing that, or the things that kind of, yeah, got me in a bit of a twist. It's musically still very focused on, you know, what he was doing on the previous three albums. It's still a lot of that, you know, very raw, dirty, 
kind of you know first wave black metal sound Mm -hmm. but you do have you know these songs that are for the first time are really leaning into the you know the viking and odinism kind of stuff lyrically and so it's this weird crossroads of what he did before and what he was going to do what was also throwing me off a lot of people had been uh sort of you know pitching it to me in terms of like, oh, you got to go back and listen to it. It's, it's better than Hammer Hard. It's better than Twilight of the Gods. So I'm very much was, you know, kind of wanting to compare it to those albums in my head. It's like, okay, this is supposed to be one of the Viking era albums. But like I just said, musically, it's really not similar to those. A lot of the music is similar to the old stuff. And when you break it down song by song, there's not that much Viking material on here. I mean, you've, you've got the intro, Odin you know, rides over Nordland, which, you know, it's a long intro. It builds really nicely. It sets a great atmosphere. But, you know, it is just, you know, an intro thing. You know, you got a fine day to die. Yes, you know, that's, you know, very much, you know, in the Hammer Heart uh, kind of tradition. But you don't have a lot more Viking material here. You know, the Golden Walls of Heaven, that's more the, you know, satanic tear down, kill the angels kind of stuff. Uh, Pace till death is about racing. Uh, <laughs> you, know, you know, Holocaust is about nuclear Armageddon. It's kind of a late, you know, it's more of like a you know later '80s thrash metal topic. Uh, for all those who died, I haven't quite figured that one out. It feels like it could be Vikingy. It also feels like it could just sort of be anti-Christiany. I'm not quite sure what the content they're supposed to be. You know, Desiree is another one that's more on the satanic end. And so you don't really get another full-blown Viking number until the closer, Blood, Fire, Death, which, you know, is the big, you know, epic one. So uh, that's why I didn't get the album at first, you know, that it really is trying to meld the two different eras together. It's it's the transition album. It's the last time, you know, he's going to do a lot of this, oh, Satan, Angel's Bad goats good kind of you know material and i have no problem with that material i'm not trying to belittle it i like the early bathory catalog a lot but then it's also yeah going in this other direction just hasn't quite it hasn't gotten the music developed to match those lyrical aspirations the way he would on the next two albums after it and of course you know with the title being the way it is and the cover art being the way it is that also may always meant me it wanted to put it completely over into that Viking category. The Viking stuff on here is really good. It, it obviously struck a chord with him as well, because that's the direction he followed from then on. But it, it's not a Viking album overall. It, it still has a lot of the non viking old school stuff on it. And it just took my brain a while to figure out that eh, it's both at the same time. And that's OK. And it both halves work pretty well here. So, yeah, I, I'm digging the album now. Just had to sit down and kind of piece it together song by song to get the old noggin to understand what it is and also what it is not. Right on. Yeah. So have you, a- you've heard oh, you've heard Twilight of the Gods, you've heard Hammerheart, you've heard all those or. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. And the ones before it, I have not the one I haven't listened to in ages that I need to revisit is uh, Under the Sign of the Black Mark. I've had it forever. That's a great record. But I, I, I haven't I guarantee you I haven't played that in 10 years or more. <laughs> I remember liking it. I just it just hasn't come back up in rotation in a long time. What are you gonna say, Bill? I cut you off. I didn't mean to. Oh, no, you're good. You're good. I, I on Bloodfire Death. There's always I've always felt there's a lot of thrashy riffing on there, which yeah. I really mm-hmm. love actually. Yeah. And it's, it is kind of a transition. Like I could always hear sometimes some of the riffs would remind me of early Metallica, you know, like kill them all era Metallica, you know, mm. like uh, filtered through, of course, what he was doing on the earlier black metal records. And I think that's one of the reasons I love it. Cause I love, I love that very raw thrash <laughs> element, you know? So mm. that's, I think why it's one of my favorites, you know, <laughs> I do have under the Simon's sign. kicking you out of the hall. <laughs> no, si- Simon, I do have it. I have the original vinyl pressing. I've had it since the mid nineties. It's back there. I just haven't played it in forever. Oh, so no, no, no. I'm, I'm good. His steel is true. His steel mm-hmm, is mm-hmm. except for that little rap moment that will kind of <laughs> plays over. We'll, we'll edit out and post. Hey, Bill. 
that security guard keeps watching us. <laughs> <laughs> We're just going to have to drop frog the bomb the biggest on that log. <laughs> Ice froggy frog. <laughs> I love it. Don't get me started. All right. Yeah. Last yeah. one. Yep. Okay. I will show again where the metallic hardcore thing. <laughs> we here. won't be seeing Alan in. <laughs> <laughs> Od- Odin has cast you out. <laughs> you have been cast out. <laughs> this is a, uh, you know, classic Victory Records metallic hardcore. I had this on CD, but this just got reissued. It's basically a complete discography. Dead guy. Everything that this band ever did. So. Hmm. This record is less metallic than what they would go on to do that. They did a EP after this called, and it's on here. It's called screaming with the dead guy quintet. Um, one of the guys from Rorschach Rorschach was joined this band and, you know, and was one of the guitarists. This band went on to become kiss it goodbye, which was even heavier, sludgier. They had an album out on revelation in the late nineties, you know, just really angular, aggressive it's kind of you can kind of hear how it's in the vein it's sometimes like stuff like like botch and things like that and a lot of that really you know angular hydra head 90s uh metallic hardcore stuff but this one fixation on a co-worker and all their stuff a band that was really ahead of their time and has left their their stamp on that whole metal and hardcore crossover so good stuff I just watched a documentary about them. It was pretty interesting. Yeah, they were, like I said, they were a, a unique band. Like I said, very ahead of their time, I think. Yeah. All right, Alan, what's your last your last deal? All right, last one. This is a work in progress. It's something I mentioned in a video I had picked up, and a lot of folks seem anxious to find out what I think of this one. They're like, oh, I think you're going to like that. You should definitely check it out. It's you got to pay attention to it. I've started playing it, so I don't have a final verdict yet. Uh, but what we're talking about here is uh, Stargazer's Psychic Secretions. So, Australian band, been around for a while, but have never put out a ton of stuff. They're described as sort of like avant-garde, progressive, black death stuff. A whole, whole bunch of adjectives going on there. Um, I had never heard of this band until the past couple of months and then it seemed like they started popping up everywhere um you know kellen has been rocking a stargazer shirt more than once over on the heavy metallurgy album club so i'm like huh don't know that band uh also they got mentioned on a recent episode of radical research i'm trying to remember which episode it was i but i'm drawing a blank it wasn't about the band or the album they were just you know mentioned in passing but you know both Jeff and Hunter were like, you know, oh yeah, you know, that, that album was, you know, really incredible by then. So, you know, when Kellen's advertising it and Hunter and Jeff are giving it a thumbs up, it's one of those things like, hmm, make a note of that. And this was another one that was really cheap in the Nameless Grave uh, 50% off distro. So it was like, okay, I, I don't know anything about this band really other than the few yeah, you know, there, there's a T-shirt in two people you know, that I greatly respect saying it's good. Uh, and so, sure, let's give it a shot. Uh, so very much a blind buy kind of thing, which I don't do all that often anymore. I've played it twice. So, and yeah, twice is not enough to digest an album like this. But I do like it. Um, folks had mentioned that you know, like it tends to be noticeable and prominent bass presence, which it does. Um, it, yeah, it's got a lot of progressive moments. The vocals are still very heavy, though. It's still rooted in extreme metal vocals. Uh, it's eight songs. It's a pretty compact album. I think it was 38 minutes, if I'm remembering correctly. You know, relatively short. You know, for, you start hearing your know, avant-garde black metal. You're like, oh, Jesus Christ, I'm going to have to block off all of Tuesday afternoon to get through this thing. No, I really didn't with this. Uh, the, the songs... You know, do their thing and then they move on to the next one. They're not all meant to be 12 minute, you know, gymnastics exercises. Um, yeah, so I've gotten through them twice. And I'm like, that's actually pretty cool. I'm going to need to spend some more time with it to suss out all the details of what's going on. But yeah, so far, this actually does sound uh, pretty interesting. I'm glad I picked it up and giving it a chance. It's uh, it's looking uh, looking pretty 
positive on the Stargazer. So, yeah, thanks to those who have uh, recommended it. And uh, sometimes you blind and buy stuff, and it turns out to be pretty cool. Sweet. And that is all I've got. Bill, you have any more? No, I'm good. That about good. that covers it. Yeah. Right on. Mm -hmm. Well, there we go. There we have it. Bill's return to Heavy Metallurgy. It's good to see you, as always. And um, thanks for joining us. Yeah. Glad to be back. It's always a good time. Anything going on that people need to look out for other than going in the description and going to your channel and hitting subscribe? What you got anything coming up? Like I said, Uncross is planning on at some point in the next few months recording a new EP. So I'm trying to book some time there. Like I said, I'm I'm sure before the end of the year we'll have something else recorded and out there. So watch watch my channel for news on that. So right on. What you got coming up on Let's Talk Metal, Alan? Tuesday. What's happening Tuesday? I don't know. Um, oh, wait. Actually, maybe I do. I'm getting very close to episode 200, and I have something uh, a little different planned for episode 200. If 200 is next week, then uh, yes, we'll, uh, we'll do that video. I've had it in the can for a while and just never got around to posting it, and I realized like that would actually kind of be a nice one to do for some kind of milestone episode. So we, we might have, you know, a very special let's talk metal uh, episode number 200 coming up on Tuesday. Awesome. That's great. But yeah, it, it, it's probably, it actually probably will not interest <laughs> many folks whatsoever, but uh, it, it, it was a thought exercise that uh, I wanted to work through and I did. And then I'll subject it to other people. <laughs> Simon asks, is it chameleon again? Been there, done that. Chameleon yeah. Redux. <laughs> yeah. yeah. <laughs> this time yeah. we're going to listen to the remastered edition. Yeah. Spoiler alert! It sounds exactly like the unremastered edition. <laughs> well, uh, uh, Simon Simon does make a point there. We we ha having you know laid that particular lizard to our rest. We do need a, a new white whale to uh, to torment us and to pursue. We'll have to work on just which one that's going to be. Mm. We, we've kind of laid that nemesis behind us and uh but, but there has to be another one don't know yeah. you've, you've always got to have something out there that you can shake your fist at and uh yeah rage against. another it's like it's like in pokemon it's like in a uh, pokemon my, my little boy finally after checking something like three thousand pidgeys he finally got a shiny pidgey you should get a shiny about at least like maybe one out of 600 odds. So he should have like five shinies of that stupid little flying rat by now. Mm -hmm. He just got his first one and, and it had been a running joke with the family for you know months that every time one shows up, it's like, is today the day? Click no. <laughs> but now that he's got that, we're kind of at a loss. You know, the meme is used up at this point. And so we, we have, we've, we're yet to identify the next Pokemon. That's the, the shiny that taunts us that we can't quite find. Yeah. Might be Zubat because that little motherfucker won't show up to save my life. <laughs> <laughs> it's got a sweet shiny, so daddy want one. Yeah. <laughs> but uh yeah, so we, we gotta find a new chameleon to uh to, to, to cause us some angst. Scott we, says we'll, we'll uh re in chaos. Rain chaos. <laughs> yeah. That, <laughs> that that's that could work for Marty for sure. I, I don't have the I can listen to it. It's not uh, I don't have I a don't, horse in that I don't, race. Yeah, I don't hate that record. It, you know, it's yeah. I own it on CD. You know, I'd have to go. I don't even know what last time I heard that. But it's that, still so. the weakest dissection record. Yeah. I, oh, sure. Yeah. Obviously. Yeah. But yeah, I don't feel like I can even hardly comment on the album. So yeah. But uh, I, I shall find my new uh, my new nemesis, and when I do, I promise I will run it in the ground every bit as much as I did Chameleon. <laughs> <laughs> well, right yeah. on, Bill. Thank you so much for hanging out with us tonight. Really cool yeah. pulls, all kinds of neat stuff. Uh, yeah, I, I don't cool. know the crust punk scene at all, but it's uh, it's great to have you feature and highlight some of that stuff because a lot of folks in the chat and folks who watch later on, you know, they dig that stuff. So I'm, yeah, I'm still you know, wandering into the that. genre, very un uneducated too. So I, I enjoy the crap of it when I find a record I dig. But yeah, yeah. I love. A lot I have a those. bad feeling at some point in the next five years, it's going to be it's one of those genres that may click with me, and then I'm going to have to work my way back through the whole damn thing. So it's kind of one of those things that if you hit the, 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 you know, the bigger bands and the, you're, you're good because a lot yeah. of it, the, the, the style that I like the D beat shit, it all sounds very similar. There's not yeah. a lot of, 
uniqueness or you know it's all it's all kind of a message thing and with a really cool violent crusty delivery yeah. system you know the japanese hardcore stuff that's another like obsession thing from the 80s and 90s stuff and a lot of that stuff is has its own feel too i mean that's a whole nother can of worms you know pat is another person obviously pat eric those guys know all about that oh shit. They're they're, super, yeah 100 percent. they're super knowledgeable about it as well so you know but yeah just dip your toe in here and there and find out what you dig those are all good recommendations yeah amoebix hell bastard deviated instinct i love deviated misery instinct, man. extinction of mankind yeah all those all those bands agnesy agnesy yeah agnesy axe grinder newer one sword sword wielders a newer one that's pretty good too so hell yeah. shock hell shock definitely good yeah mm. yeah they're out there they're out there uh show notes monday there's a review up from kellen i can't remember what he sent me i haven't even looked at it yet and uh wednesday's album club we're talking about this album exactly. sacrilege within the realm within huh. the prophecy mm -hmm. and you want to hear where bolt thrower got their wings it's right here baby right yep. here um so yeah check that out and next week we have greg or greg hunter hunter yes. gin yes mr gin from uh, radical research uh will be joining us to talk about this year in metal 1993 yep. a year that hunter is uh, particularly fond of so when we realized we hadn't done that one so it's like i i know who to uh i know who to invite for that particular year so yeah looking forward to having him on he hasn't been on in a while he's obviously very busy these very days busy with uh, agaloc and other projects so it was really kind of him to work us into the schedule absolutely but until then bill it was good seeing you alan always a pleasure everybody thank you so much for joining us we had a great time as always thank good turnout all. a lot of new faces in here great to see some new people in here chatting it up so enjoy the community and we appreciate all of you take care we will see you next week and remember fuck the security